I'd like to call to order the regular business meeting of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District for February. Um, if we look through the agenda here, uh, do I hear a motion to accept uh, and approve the consent agenda? Yes, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. I second the motion. Are they on? Can you hear me? Can you hear? I don't think so. Are they? They are? Okay. I just wasn't close enough. Sorry, Miles. I second the motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Consent agenda passes. Um, next, we have comments from citizens on agenda on uh, agenda non agenda items. First, we have Mark Christie. If I can read your. Okay. Uh, all right. Mitch Moore. Hello again, uh, Mitchell Moore, uh, C 2929 Northeast Loop Drive. And it's been, I think, a couple months since I've been able to attend, but I've been streaming you. Thank goodness for that. It's very useful. Um, I just had a couple comments from the agenda tonight. Um, things I noticed uh, from, from the past. One of them was I was really uh, happy to see the contact that had been made with DEQ on the Septic Smart system and um, really got to see that contact was made. Um, you might recall that the Neighborhood Association has been advocating a, a um, voluntary program to at least start while we wait for all these other great sewer things to happen. And um, I know there's some committees getting involved in that. We brought that kind of concept um, in May of 2014. And uh, at that time and now the DEQ has got these kind of standard um, tests and uh, you know that you should run and forms to do that and actually the certification process for the people to test it so that's great um, the staff report stopped just short of recommending you know the use of that um, so I was just going to sort of encourage the board to uh, perhaps consider adopting the DEQ standards they'll be used anyway when when we start having the required testing on transfer of sale that are all in the coastal zone that is supposed to be happening sometime in the next year. So it would be, it would be you know, aligned with the state. So I just encourage you to adopt that for, or, you know, because I'd like to get my septic tank inspected but been waiting just because I don't want to have an inspection done that wouldn't pass muster. So um, also commenting on the aeration project. Um, I watched Dr. Horn. He's very entertaining and, and uh, obviously very knowledgeable. Um, should you proceed, I just would like to sort of encourage you to place a hard stop. I know that was contemplated in the meeting between phase one and two. It just says, let's see what this says. You can go ahead and award a contract, whatever you choose to do, but make sure that you have the opportunity to decide whether to proceed or not before you go spend that extra 80 plus thousand dollars on the engineering because I think that's a point where that first portion could be used to at least do some exploratory work on funding and then you can kind of decide is this a viable project from funding perspective as well. So I am a little concerned by some of the um, contact that's been made after the fact by other providers and think because it's a no um, bid process you might at least want to take some kind of formal action related to those. I really don't have an advice to you. To, how to take that other than there are some people who thought they'd like to have an opportunity to talk to you at least and maybe you want to hear them or maybe it's done and but uh, at least take a look at that and then finally on the committees which I'm just thrilled to see that moving forward and I was glad to see um, that there's a you know a very extensive uh, list of policies in place to to um, uh, make this happen and then I guess there'll be discussions more about the actual committee uh, your homework I guess from last meeting uh, what the structure will be and what the activities will be that I would suggest this is a good time to um, when you're done tonight reach out to not just the Devil's Lake Neighborhood Association but all neighborhood associations because most of them now that exist in in Lincoln City are in some way shape or form within the district so and just uh, solicit input on that um, they may be interested in providing members or they may have some 
comment about the policies that you're proposing or something like that would be a great opportunity to get some people engaged uh, and be very easy to do. So that's the end of my comments. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mitch. Appreciate it. All right. Um, unfinished business then. Um, that was like plan. Can can I, I did this last meeting, but can I make a motion that we um, talk about septic and sewer um, under the Devil's Lake plan, but then skip down to the item F under hard, harmful algae blooms, unless there's something really important in there, Paul, um, that I'm skipping over, but just in a quick preview of my 38-page staff report. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't so see it. There is one item um, that we should talk about, and that's the Lake Steward nomination. Yeah, that would be the last oh, okay. one. That's the one item that I think we... The rest are pretty much just quick, and you can just okay. throw them through that. So um, first off, I'd like to just take an opportunity to introduce uh, to you all and to District Joanne Glass, who is our recorder tonight. Uh, Joanne is uh, filling in for Rick Mark, who, of course, is working for the NewsGuard now, and, and uh, she's fulfilling his contract, and you know maybe we'll have her even renew a contract with us in the future. But uh, So welcome her. She's from Vernonia, uh, was a city recorder up there, uh, and actually knew Mr. Seth Leonard, who, uh, of course, was a rare intern before he came to us uh, up in Vernonia. So that's kind of an interesting uh, connection. So I just uh, welcome her. OK, so just just quickly then, um, on the septics and sewer, uh, I was alluded to, well, the first one is I just wanted to bring people to, uh, to your attention, the presentation that uh, I participated with the city engineer and the uh, Pace Engineering to the uh, Oregon chapter of the, I just can read it, um, American Public Works Association, I believe it is, uh, which was the uh, luncheon that they held, the coastal luncheon. So best thing, biggest takeaway there is it's out in front. People are interested in this project. Um, people are talking about it, and I think that's what we need. So, um, you know, that's uh, good that, that that got shared. So, can I, can I ask a question? Sure. What What was your part of the presentation? So you talked about. Yeah. So I gave the basically the the framework for uh, the needs for restoration, kind of the hundred year history of Devil's Lake in the watershed, kind of a regurgitation of past um, presentations, kind of reformat some of those things, just really setting the tone as to. Um, where this project sits in the scope of additional projects and then introduced in brief, say our Save Our Shoreline program, uh, the uh, aeration potential program, that sort of thing. So and then the next item, the septor, septic inspector training, uh, which was alluded to in the public comment there, um, that was a DEQ sponsored training um, for their septic inspectors uh, held at the community college, which we hosted. Um, basically, I think the um, most pertinent thing is that, you know, they've basically come up with this existing system evaluation report, which is eight-page kind of report, standardized report, that if, if these inspectors are going to be part of this program, they need to use. It's kind of just their way of standardizing um, inspections uh, throughout the state. And, um, you know, they have the Oregon Septic Smart Program, and there's some links there. There's actually a nice homeowner's brochure. Uh, there's a home buyer's brochure, which I think is another kind of important kind of thing for people to be aware of. Um, I put some links on our uh, face, um, on our website, and then in the staff report, and then actually corrected the link that was in the staff report to license inspector. I don't know if anybody caught that, but that, the link was erroneous and actually went to a meeting and had a bad URL or something. So <laughs> that's been corrected on our website. So if you're looking for that licensed inspector, you can find that link on our page. And then, of course, that's a, it's a DEQ uh, link. So. so, Paul, I have a question with that. So is this something like if I was a septic inspector person, I would be certified as a septic smart inspector? Yes. You, uh, it's you, you. Yes, basically, yes. Yeah, you're, you're part of, you can just be part of that program. Yeah. And so if you're going to be 
don't know if the exact name is they're part of the septic smart program but yes to that effect okay. absolutely and so you know the thinking is is that people will utilize that have that conform uh, kind of uniform uh, process that is you know very clear um, and it's an evaluation. Uh, that's that's one of the key words in there, so actually. So are the septic inspectors being, is, is there a training for them to to become a septic smart inspector, or is it? So I'm not as familiar with their training requirements, frankly. But okay. that, that is a, a license that you can get. You know, they don't just I guess give I'm asking more selfishly from since I'm the committee chair for the septic inspection program. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that this would be like the perfect end for us to start a voluntary septic inspection program. I did not want to say that, but I'm glad you did. That's that was my kind of thinking too, and that's why, you know, I didn't say that we should adopt this in the staff report because I figure you're forming this committee and you're going to be de dealing with these things. But absolutely, this is really the template to be jumping on and moving forward with, in my estimation. Okay. So if we contact them. They can, they could provide us potentially with training to, um, for volunteers to do septic inspection and such. Is that you got to get certified if you want to be part of that program. You know, it's a certification program. It's just a license like anything else. So, um, but there's potentially training at DQ. I, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to follow up with the, the you know, the staff at uh, DQ to find out what exactly. If you're looking for a homeowner's type of training, this was a training for again septic inspectors. That people would hire, you know. Okay, so then the next item, uh, sewer system development charges here, your SDCs that the city has. Um, they had a, a meeting a couple weeks ago here at City Hall regarding um, those charges for water and sewer. I list the um, effect of the potential uh, rates for sewer, uh, which are going. Uh, down um, considerably as were the water rights for those SDCs. So what that means for potential sewering the lake is, or you know, other places, you know, parts of the watershed or the city for that matter that would sewer is, you're looking at saving about $2,900, you know, from a year ago. Um, so that's, that's a pretty significant thing for your typical uh, sized water meter, which is what they rate the SDC for the sewer on it. You don't have a sewer, you're, obviously your sewer hookups are bigger than five eighths of an inch, so. Um, but it's based on the water rate, a uh, water meter size. Um, and then it, um, they added a three quarter meter size with w between the last time they updated these. That's why it kind of says NA in that uh, percent change over there. But these are considerably less, as you can see. 52. What's driving that, Paul? Um, they did the, well, for one, it's this um, Devil's Lake sewer design. So when they're updating the master plan and, you know, something at that scale, that will often trigger a, a reevaluation of the SDCs. And they hadn't done them in about 12, 13 years, as I understand. So um, this is this is a good good timing. For because the last time I talked to somebody at the city about the SDC charges, they said that they that they were significantly less than they should be. And now they're looking at 47% decreases? Well, SDCs do not cover all of the costs um, that you might think that they could. And so if, if you're anticipating, and this, this was a question that I raised at the, after their meeting is, you know, these rates are going down, but yet they're including the idea of sewering the lake as something that these SDCs can help contribute to. Well, they can't, at these rates or even the old rates, build a sewer system. They can only allow the city to participate. Most of the SDCs are, um, well, there's two types. And, you know, I'm, I've been debriefed on this very little because, I, you know, I've got, you know, this is not my bailiwick. I'm just listening to their meeting and asking a few questions. Um, but you have uh, SDCs that cover existing infrastructure and then future basically. And so the existing infrastructure is like the sewer <coughs> wastewater treatment plant. Okay. Excuse me. And that was, you know, a lot of money, you know. And as they pay off, in fact, I think part of the reason that they've come down is they've prepaid off some of those bonds 
so there's less money that they owe that they're still paying on even though the things constructed they may still be using you know uh, sewer rates to, to pay those bonds so SDCs can help pay those bonds those type of things and so as they've retired some of those bonds um, that would decrease the the amount of money that they would need on the existing infrastructure side and then the uh, future infrastructure side are things like sewering the lake and so that item is listed in there but again it's um, it's the dollars don't equate to building a whole sewer system around that lake um, you know three or four thousand dollars per person is not going to do that um, it can contribute it but it's also those three or four thousand dollars or two thousand three thousand dollars are also contributing to paying off the sewer infrastructure you know the existing sewer infrastructure so um, they're pretty complicated uh, you know they had a and I think they've had the same uh, uh, consultant working with them for decades on this and he was the one that was presenting this along with mr. Ron Tierney so um, But I mean, you know, that's good news. I think you know, for people that are yeah. interested in sewering uh, their properties. Uh, the next one is a uh, Voyage Lake LED. I I don't have any photos. I think we this thing is really moving forward. And Brian, maybe you could just give us some update on that. I know that they were pressure testing yesterday or something these lines and. Yeah, the uh, <clears throat> as far as I can tell, the lines are all in. Um, I'm, had a busy day today. I'm sorry. I wanted to get down and see if the um, the uh, stormwater separator had been installed and what that looked like. I think that's a big deal because that deals with stormwater runoff and a really nice addition to the project that I did not anticipate. Anyway, though, the lines are installed, um, and I didn't know they were pressure testing <coughs> today. But, uh, you know, that's it. The... the, the uh, the line down the middle of the road is installed. The laterals are installed. The um, the the, um, the entry point for the home system um, is in place. It looks like a, a water meter kind of a deal. At least the cover does. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't pulled my cover up to see what the uh, uh, what the piece looks like, but um, it's all in. Um, and so uh, what I understood was that um, if they're pressure testing, that's a good thing because that's the step that's required for the city and DEQ to accept the project, and then that will um, then that opens the door for the roads to be paved. So, yeah, it's, it moved uh, pretty quickly once they got on the ground. And so well, I, I was over at the park a couple of weeks ago with my granddaughter, and I saw that they had a pressure gauge already hooked up to one of the pipes there, and so I assumed they were. I, thought it moved along really fast. Yeah, they could pressure test part of it without all of it because they have stops. Right. Uh, Each built junction into the line. has a stop, right? Pardon? Each one has a stop. Probably. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I, I would think that they So that if your pump do. fails, it doesn't flow into his house. Right. I yeah. mean. That yeah. makes sense. I hadn't given it that much thought. <laughs> you will when thing. your neighbor's sewer runs into your house. <laughs> yeah. So you're looking at completion by May. Looks yeah, like that was there under their contract for good. May. That was basically to give enough time to have dry weather to pave, which is kind of the right the slower. I mean, that's the one they have to have dry weather for. So, so yeah, it's, it's good news on that. And I and I did see. I think it was today. It looked like. The 19th Street, uh, or in 19th Street, I think that they were working on that potentially. There were some people up there, and I assume that was what the, the that sewer line that they're putting down that road um, looked like that was coming in too. So because that was adopted in December or something, that reimbursement district. So, all right. So let's get the, down to the Lake Steward. Yeah. Um, so we have this uh, annual award, or we have had, um, you know, I guess first off, is this something the district wants to continue with? It would be, uh, the this would be the moment to drop out right now uh, if you wanted to. Uh, if not, um, you know, we would solicit nominations through March 1st, p potentially, and then um, even we've taken them in person at the March meeting. Um, 
but uh, the banquet is April 30th, so we do have that month of March to order a award and that sort of thing. And then if you know. Well, my opinion is we should continue with that. Oh, yeah, I, I think so. I'm, I'm just, I uh, would like to see maybe us provide our input on that uh, maybe at the next meeting. I have to confess not having given it that much thought. I didn't notice it until I looked at the. Well, so I would hope we could make a decision to hold it or not have it. And then the next meeting would be the time where you would. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think we're in agreement, I guess. I'm talking for everybody. I I'll just be quiet. Okay. I'm not an award fan, so. But if the rest of us are, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I'm in favor of it. Okay. Yeah, me too. Well, sounds like we'll do it. Okay, great. I'll let them know. Um, and then just quickly, the safety report, uh, that's listed there for you um, as well. Some key things there, though, you know, pointing out there from that uh, special district's uh, review that we had. So, um, is there any questions on that, or does anybody want any background on any of those things? Was this all brought about by uh, our insurer? Yes. All these items. Okay. I guess we can skip down to F, harmful algal brooms and aeration. That's the main topic for tonight great absolutely um, so obviously you've had um, some time to be considering this from uh, dating back really middle of 2014 um, we started looking at uh, aeration as op being an option for the uh, for the improvement of like aeration or oxidation or oxygenation lots of different kind of tag words on that but really some sort of tool involving moving water to bring uh, improvements to the lake and we went through a process that officially started I think it was November 2014 with a um, basically a uh, request for proposals for to do that um, we didn't get any hard proposals we got a few um, we got some feedback uh, and then we took that feedback uh, and then that March 2015 started the process towards doing a direct appointment and uh, I've uh, been working with Dr. Horn since about April, um, and then of course at our, our just January 2016 meeting, he and uh, HBH were here. Um, so this is this is kind of where we are. We have um, he was actually Dr. Horn was uh, away uh, in Brazil uh, for the last like week or so, setting reservoirs down there, and so uh, I took the liberty and um, of updating his proposal to reflect the changes w which were in HBH's proposal because HBH's proposal is embedded in his. His proposal didn't change really, didn't, wouldn't have changed at all except for those tasks associated with the HBH's proposal. So my anticipation is that that is not a problem. We haven't heard back to him, I have emailed him about that, but that's, um, that is a caveat to what that link uh, says. And it, and it says right there, the link itself is a scope of work proposed um, excuse me, suggested revisions from, from us. And so I just want to make that clear um, that that moving forward. The HBH proposal is the one that basically is their third iteration. Um, Dr. Horn's proposal is, is his July iteration, the second iteration, with those, um, uh, with those updates and a couple of typographical errors. So, so. Um, that is, I think, the background on that. Um, I've been bouncing back a potential sequence and schedule with uh, the affected uh, consultants as well, and you see that in there too. Um, and you know, even updated that uh, Gantt chart to reflect those um, those, that, those perspective timelines, which, again, were you know are achievable, but optimistic when you look at funding too, right? And, and permitting and those t big questions that don't necessarily. Uh, have finite timelines, um, but I did, and this is the reason you have what, 38 pages. I did include basically all of the text from what Dr. Horn provided, and and some questions and emails that we had had from uh, what were some folks that were commenting on on these things, and just just to just to really um, put it out there uh, 
for folks to be able to dive into and delve into. So um, that's, I think, what I have for you. One of the questions I had about um, when he was here and the length of time that he was here, actually, um, how much information did he actually, was he furnished to uh, base his um, opinion or and or possible solution? Because I was a little bit confused when he said there's 17 different options. And I was reluctant to say, well, we'll take all 17. <laughs> but, you know, I wanted to know how he based his his response to um, the information that he was given mm -hmm. as to the status of the lake or the condition of the lake. So we've been in discussions with Dr. Horn since really November 2014, just as, you know, one of the potential contractors that would have bid for the original one. Mm -hmm. And so he was part of those considerations for that, that first RFP that went out. And he, um, he was one of the people that replied to us um, you know, later on and said, well, yeah, I'd, I considered your RFP, uh, had a team down in California that were working with some proposals, a uh, um, couple other contractors that they were maybe trying to assemble to, to, you know, decide if they wanted to put a bid in. So he's been, he'd been kind of looking at this really for even before we met in April last year for a few months he had had. Um, mm -hmm. And then basically when, before he came up in April, I sent him down a whole list of stuff. Of course, that was all the same stuff that was available to any of the other contractors too. You know, the, here's our bathymetry layer. You know, here's some water quality stuff. You know, here's you know mountains and mountains of data. And so, um, you know, particularly on the plane up, I know he was saying he was reading all that again. And and then when we uh, spent the whole day there in in, uh, in April, um, and then you know as he was. Uh, developing his, his contract and proposal, obviously, that time through, you know, and then it hasn't really changed mm -hmm. since July. You know, the 17 methods and 15 watershed methods are very similar to the ones that we'll see, I think, what we'll see we have done. When we look back at the work that we did to assess, and you'll, if you even remember, <coughs> his slides were like the physical treatments, the biological treatments, you know, the chemical treatments, the biochemical Treatments. Yeah, know. we even have a chart um, of, of those mm -hmm. with, the, with, you know, the various criteria, decision modes, cost, um, and you know, we we looked at it you know, hard and long a couple of times already, and I think, you know, he's looking at pretty much the same things and he's just going to give us a, a, basically an expert opinion at the stuff well, that we've already looked at. That really is the reason that we've settled on aeration as probably um, our, our best uh, option going forward because of the other things uh, either uh, don't work or uh, only work temporarily or cost too much or um, and that's how we've gotten to uh, to uh, to uh, aeration. And Bill, I you know one of the questions I asked him and the written questions that we submitted. Mm -hmm. um, I, mean, I asked him point blank and tried to make the question as, as detailed as possible. And let me just read it and, and his very short answer. Uh, do you have sufficient data or knowledge of the conditions in Devil's Lake to proceed with a design? And or has the state of the science evolved to the point that you can make valid assumptions about the conditions and how to treat them without developing more data specific to Devil's Lake? Or do you need to do a feasibility study similar to that done at Cherry Creek before the system can be designed? And he just said, uh, we probably have enough data. And he, ha he has looked at the data, he's talked about the data, and I don't, uh, and we do have a lot of data, and I don't. Uh, one, one data fact that he had brought up last uh, meeting was the fact that he understood there was only two to three feet of sedimentation, and is that, did I hear that wrong? So um, what I think he was referring to is the, um, we had a uh, sediment core done, and he was reflecting on that, that sediment core. Um, was he not aware of the other uh, 
sludge testing or information that was provided to the board? I assume he was aware. I don't know if he was reflecting on that at the time. No. Yeah. So did he so, do any physical uh, drop, drop a stick or anything? When he no, you haven't up? hired him except for just to come up and. Oh, I thought you took him out for a boat ride. We did. Yeah, but oh. we didn't. You know, we didn't just like go with it. I, I don't know what what kind of other testing you were anticipating we would have done that day, but it was really an introduction day for him out there in the water. Um, so you know that. This is her design. You know, if, if you were interested in doing a, you know, like a modeling project again or more research, that was something that the district did look at, decided not to. Um, that, that predated the, um, uh, the first aeration RFP. It was just too, ex we thought it was too expensive to get yep. more information. We yep. thought we had enough information. Um, yeah, I, I think that he was basing, in my opinion, was, you know, he, the, the 17 different things and the, the items he's going to look at is similar to the list that we have. I, I'm of the same opinion as you are. And those are the things that are available for any, any lake system. And then basically through that evaluation, he'll, he will lay those out and what's the most cost effective, best for us. And right now we're thinking it's aeration. Before he even does that, um, I but you know, to, to kind of, if I could just interject mm -hmm. to uh, uh, Mitch Mitch's comment about uh, well, first of all, I think you know one of the good things about the the, uh, the last changes to the agreement is we 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 have a, a hard stop at every stage of the of the process, but I think we should we should stress to him that. Um, when he's done with phase one, that uh, we want a chance to evaluate his his findings, uh, you know, before we proceed. You know, in other words, I think as Mitch was suggesting, just don't start in the phase two right away, but rather give us give us your report on phase one. And I think that's why he's got divided into. Phase yeah, and it's phase provided one. yeah explicitly in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, but um, let's just make it clear that that we want a chance to evaluate what he tells us before we proceed. Yep. And and we, we had that discussion and that's so the um, the link that you had to his uh, contract also included a uh, initial work plan and that work plan has that broken out phase one and then the district reviews and I put like a month and a half even on the timeline, as you'll see, because, you know, if he gave it to us the day before our meeting and then can't really get it out to the public, that's why I put a month and a half. If you wanted two and a half months, fine, you know, I mean, that kind of thing, whatever you felt you wanted to. But your consent to move forward has to occur before any of those, that beginning of task two, which is basically launching the, the design design work. Well, I, I, I'll tell you that. I appreciated the comments from uh, Richard Danielson, you know, looking at what he had, John Tucci and uh, Brian Kling as they gave their comments forward too. I think that um, as as we look, look, look forward to, you know, if we move forward with doing this, that, that we should have a design that is open enough that we're going to get multiple bidders, that we aren't in a situation that we were before, that it's so narrow that um, we can't we can't attract different bidders or different technologies that might work the same way. I just think we ought to have that option in there. I thought those were, those were things that I was concerned about all along. Um, I think that in, in my estimation, and I talked to um, a friend of ours that has been watching this the whole time. That's a retired uh, chemistry professor from Willamette, and and I think that as we looked at this, this has been something that we all believe is is the best way to move forward if we're going to do anything on the lake. It seems to be the most cost effective, um, and at least look at it in more detail. Um, and and I, I would agree with Brian that it's those hard stops that are important. Um, because we might look at that and then just say, wow, that's, we, we 
can't do it. You know, it won't be it won't be possible. Or we'll say yes, this is possible, and we want to move forward. Well, and we need to keep an open mind. He might actually recommend something else. You know, that's right. That's right. The whole point, I think, of going through the 17 options and either discounting them and giving us a reason why, or saying, "Hey, wait a second, maybe we should think about this." So. Well, and, and from my experience working with permitting for my little project, um, I, like I was telling Paul before the meeting, I finally, finally actually got the permit from from uh, the Army Corps engineers with a BioP from National Marine Fisheries, and a project of this scale, the key hurdle in my in my mind will be National Marine Fisheries because they are the ones that control everything here and us being an essential salmon habitat is um, is so crucial for us being able to go move forward and make decisions based on what um, what their opinion is and how we comply with that well congratulations for getting as far as you yeah. have. and and the other thing that I'll just say this too the other good thing is that um, they changed my work window so if you see us working out there in the summer um, they changed my work window from October through mid-February to July 1st through mid-September. So they they had some change of heart with that and see the value of doing it during the drier time of the year, so. Back to the point of, um, I, I think, okay, I'm, I guess I'm kind of going on the assumption that we're gonna approve this contract tonight because I don't know what plan B is if we don't. Um, so uh, I'm thinking about, you know, but what, we, what do we want to emphasize going forward if we do adopt the contract? And I think we maybe need kind of a cover letter emphasizing this point about we want to we want to look at uh, uh, phase one before we proceed to phase two. That's one point. Um, the one that uh, can't just raise that, you know, we want to. Maybe have a paragraph in that cover letter that we uh, want. Uh, or we want. We encourage, I guess, uh, the design and, and specifications to be formulated uh, in a manner to encourage as broad a range of responsive uh, bidders. Um, as is reasonably possible, you know, something like that, so that um, uh, you know, so that we he gets the idea that, that we want to open it, and we, I think we forwarded the stuff from Tucci to him, right? Well, I like I told uh, Mr. Tucci that yeah, if as if we contract with Dr. Horn, we can we'll provide that to him. I'm, you know, we're dealing with Dr. Horn. If we, if we're, we're going to make a contract with him. Yeah, we'll get that okay, information yeah, to that, him. That makes sense. You know, and the uh, the concerns that were vetted there at that time were about like making too narrow of a design. Well, there's a kind of a catch-22 on that because you're actually hiring somebody to design something so that they can do an engineering plan. So that's kind of part of the deal as well. However, when Dr. Horn uh, Say, stated his in you know what if he did a design for us you know um, it would be basically with the exception of the regulator so that you can control the the amount of air that goes to each diffuser which he thinks is a vital you know component of the design you know really that's fundamental in the design the rest of it he said very much point blank is just all the rest of this off-the-shelf stuff so, so that really does provide <coughs> An opportunity for people to take a look at this and say, "Hey, I need 600 yard or miles of this and 50 diffusers here, and and even more so." Um, but you're also restricted, though, because you are get uh, hiring for a design, so that you can have something to go out for a, a goods and services bid for contractors generally, a vendor contract. So there's the engineering part that's being done. Is there something we can put in there that sa that says, you know, if this is written so specifically that we get one vendor to, because that, I mean, I guess that's my concern is, and, and I don't know who Ken O'Hara is, 
from Adam, and I'm sure he's a terrific guy, and I'm sure he designs an amazing product. But if the plan is um, John Tucci, um, you know, I, I mean, I think he has kind of a good point there, that it, if the plan is written so that only Atmos or O'Hare or whoever you want to call him, well, so I think that was his concern, but that gentleman lives in Wales. So his, if he wanted to build it, it would be a pretty expensive build for him. And I don't even think he's in the business of building, constructing. You know, he's in the, the, he's in the design side, so he's assisting Dr. Horn. So okay, it's, so he's what, I thought he was the one that designed the valve that we're talking the about. The regulator, yes. So the regulator. Yeah. So that's just like, it's just like saying somebody has a patent on a pump uh, pump. Or something else. It's just so one. So any uh, like it, the, whoever Brian Kling works for is, and John Tucci, any of those people could use any regulator. Well, it would have to recommended by Dr. Horn. Would have to fit the specs of that regulator if that, in fact, is part of the design. Right. Again, yes, that's something that we. I just that don't want to get in the same boat that we were in a year ago or more where we wrote it so specifically and constringent that we ended up with zero people right. writing to us. Right, yeah. I mean, I want to hear at least three people in front of us say, here's the system we can do and here's how much it's going to cost. Because if one person comes and sits in front of us with a million dollar system, I'm going to have a really hard time swallowing that pill. Yeah, no, I get that. And, and that's three why... people come in and say it's a million dollar system. It's still going to be a hard pill to swallow, but it's like, okay, it's a million-dollar pill. Yeah, right. But when I have emails in front of me saying we can do your whole lake for $300,000, and and last meeting I'm hearing $1 and $2 million thrown around, that makes me really, really nervous. So, well, I, I think there's a limit, though, on how, we, how, how much we can tell Dr. Horn about how to design his, his system. I, <clears throat> I agree with that, but I also um, – and I have – I want to make it very clear that I really like Dr. Horn. I thought he gave an excellent presentation. I think he would be terrific to work with. I understood like 90% of what he said, which was astonishing to me. But I also um, am a little leery of the other half of that with the HPH. It's just a lot of money for just a plan uh, without, you know, any – pavement on the ground for well the engineering is expensive and it's typically maybe 10 percent of a project you know and so if it were a million dollar project then this would fit right in that kind of ballpark um, but if it's a three hundred thousand dollar project and we spend a hundred thousand on the engineering of it and a company comes in front of us and i know i've said this before but i'm going to say it again of companies that do this kind of stuff a lot of times have that engineering in house, or they they you know it's been engineered before, and you, and you're paying a you know 10% of what we'd pay HBH because it's already been engineered in another lake that they're using that. And yes, I know we're going to have some engineering costs, but do we need to recreate the wheel on the engineering side of it? Maybe we do. I'm not saying we don't. I'm just saying that I I'm nervous about it. I, I understand that the the concern is. Dollars and cents make a lot of sense. I, I get that. And um, one one point of that, though, is when you're looking at a different company that says, "Well, we already have the engineering in house. We are we have to go get that engineering design so that we can get it out to a fair bid across. Otherwise, we're just direct sourcing for engineering and design or and and, and build, or which we we talked about, and that's something that you know we're not. Um, but our staff. We're getting a lot more than design. You know, we're getting. So wait, can you can you say what you just said? Because we could go out for engineering and design. Is that what you just said? That's what we're doing. Yes, but not uh, engineering, design, and build, which okay. is what the other one, the other example. Was. So that is an option. Not the former. No, that's what we no, because of because of state laws. Yeah, the way our statute says is we, if we want to do a project of this nature, we go out and get an engineering plan, a general report. And then we put it out to bid. Well, really what we're doing in my mind is we're paying Dr. Horn for his expertise to go through all 17 different options or whatever, and then have him narrow it down to the this is the, the, the road we need to take here. And then from there, 
the engineers. I, I, I was very impressed with the engineering firm that was here and gave their presentation. I feel very confident that whatever they're given, they'll be able to design and will have a workable product. I, I felt that very confident in them. But I, I think the key is, is to get to the point of, you know, we're hope, hopeful that Dr. Horn will, will you know, give, come up with a plan that heads us down the road that will then give us the options that, we, that we're looking for. And am I wrong in that? I, I, don't I think that's a good, a good assessment, yeah. Okay. And, you know, it's really just that, you know, we're trying to get a design so that we have a viable design, engineered design, that we can put on the free market and say, here, people, show us your best, bid on it. And then we can look at it nuts and bolts and say, yeah, you win. And that's, that's the way our statute's kind of built, is say, we do the engineering, we put it out to bid, we get the lowest cost on the, on the construction, and, and we build it. You know, um, that... I just want to make sure we're not putting a design and build out for a, a million or two million dollar system because of the way that, that, that we're asking it to be done when there's three hundred thousand dollar systems out there. I, I guess that's what it boils down to is yeah. that I I want the three hundred thousand dollar people at the table. I want them to be at the table. Maybe we say, you know, your system isn't for us. But I want them at the table, and I want to hear what they have to say because I don't want to only hear the million-dollar people. Does that make sense? It does, and you know they're more than welcome to bid on any projects that you bring forward if you were to design, have this design, you know. And then, I think that's what it really gets down to is they're willing, they're eligible. If if they've got the experience, then and the know-how, then they would, I think, it would behoove them to to put a bid in, you know. Um, you know, I think. When when Dr. Horn was looking at you know a three hundred thousand dollar design versus what he thought you know projected you know maybe it's a half to one point nine was the numbers that he gave half a million five hundred thousand to one point nine million um, it was based on the robustness of those designs so what he looked at their design he said well that's yeah that's a three hundred thousand dollar project if if you designed it then it would be three hundred thousand dollars to build. You know, and but does that meet your goals? And so your goals have changed from being what were, you know, pretty tight, but with the anticipation of, of trying to meet state standards for chlorophyll A, uh, not have toxic water. You know, we kind of downplayed it because we we didn't get any replies to that, and part of it was the permitting and things like that. So we thought, okay, well, let's see if we can contract for a design for trying to get out of our worst offenders and in, in, in these are these scum forming cyanobacteria, these blue green algae. And and that's that's the target, but I have to anticipate that, you know, you're if you get at that, you're gonna you're maybe not gonna get your chlorophyll down, which is what we saw in, Chlor in Cherry Creek Reservoir. Um, but if you kept it from being toxic blooms, I think we're at least moving in the right direction. And then just again, as we've discussed about just some of the basics of the chemistry in the water and just the value of having you know, good oxygenated water hitting that bottom layer consistently is, is a value. And so those, those are the things that kind of drove this discussion early. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of things we could do that are expensive or introduce a lot of other variables like, you know, alum layers or algicides and all these other kind of what ifs you, you could approach it with and when we were boiling it down we we're like this if if anything this looks like our most favorable thing and that's again what dr horn would either confirm or confirm in part or deny in, in that first phase one and so the contract is set up so that his work would would start and end at that point with that the, that 17 uh, watershed or 17 lake management and five watershed um, method assessment. Hand that to us. We take and I, I, like I said, I put it, I put six weeks on it just as a as it seemed like a reasonable time for us to consider that, and then either move forward or stop. And HBH wouldn't get a dime if we stopped, and he would get basically that first three thousand dollars or whatever that I think is associated with that fraction. So. Well, re remember what Ken Wagner said, who seems to be a pretty widely respected 
uh, authority in this area is that the, the, the biggest reason for failure um, of, of these systems is being under-designed and under-built. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I think that what we want to, um, another thing which is stressed with, with Dr. Horn is that, um, is what Wagner um, says is that if anything, you need to over design and overbuild because given what Mother Nature um, throws at you sometimes all at once, uh, that's what you need to uh, have a reasonable chance for success. So, um, you know, and, and the, the other thing about the, the, uh, the design and the permitting is it, it really improves your competitive position for getting grants. Um, when you have, you're able to go out and say, hey, you know, we've got the design, we've got the permits, um, uh, you know, we're, we're a public body with, uh, you know, uh, perpetual existence and perpetual uh, uh, funding capability. And, um, you know, we want a grant for this very this specific, well thought out project. So, you know, <clears throat> The design may be expensive, but it's, say it's more than design, it's the permitting and stuff too, but it really has value when you talk about your competitive position for, for grants. And I'd rather have something that's actually over-designed um, that uh, we say, fine, okay, we, we, we got to go out and get, uh, you know, a million dollars or a million and a half dollars and, uh, instead of 300000 but we got a chance, of, a much better chance of actually getting something for our money rather than getting nothing for our 300000 so. And, and that's kind of what's happened at Cherry Creek for them. What they, wasn't it 25% of what they were going to do? And something on that. Or there was a, like that. I, I yeah. Where, where those numbers basically changed was uh, basically the, the, the $300,000 figure came with the idea of like 80 diffusers and and the infrastructure for 80 diffusers. And, and uh, then um, somebody, I think it was Dr. Horn, said, well, maybe we, we need to talk more like 300 diffusers. And, and that's where, that's the difference in, in the cost. <coughs> but, you know, you got to ask yourself, well, what's the difference in the chance of success? So, so I think that's, uh, Another thing I'd like to put in my little cover letter would be, you know, please uh, don't don't be meek about this. Please, if anything, over design and, and uh, over design it so that we have the best chance of success reasonably possible. And uh, you know, we'll worry about the the financing later. And then maybe, you know, for for that system that's hopefully over designed, we still get the uh, $300,000 bid. I mean, that'd be the, in a perfect world, that's what would happen. Well, the end, I mean, when this is, before we choose to go forward, if, if that's what we're going to do, um, the ultimate goal is to have success. And um, if we, to whatever design, is implemented that we choose that in the end success and a change in the of, of what our link is I think this is our best chance of doing that and in moving forward and you know we don't get it in till 2018 if that's the projected um, time and by 2020 we've got a substantially different lake that that the uh, all the recreationalists, the homeowners, the users, and stuff um, see a change for the positive, then we've done a good job. So I, I would like to make a motion to, um, I don't know how to say this, but to go ahead and award the, the direct appointment of Dr. Horn and Associates as, as, out, as we've discussed. Um, and begin this process of uh, 
having him uh, evaluate Devil's Lake and our options, come up with a plan. Do, uh, do we need to refer to the, the edit one, even though he hasn't? Well, yeah, so I would, you know, <laughs> maybe suggest that, you know, you instruct staff to uh, conduct contracting uh, based on the uh, DLWID suggested edits of his contract and HBH's uh, third iteration and move that forward for, uh, you know, proceed with that as, as best as, you know, we can. I mean, obviously, um, we, don't, we don't have to get that feedback. But like I said, the changes were, were just to just align with HBHs. It didn't change his dollars amount anymore, a dollar up or down. It, it all it did is just put, put. So there's no reason why he, he I wouldn't, wouldn't, no, I wouldn't would have so. an issue yeah. with the edits we made. I'll second that motion. Discussion. Well, is the um, is the motion basically to accept? I mean, that's what we need to do. Is we need to accept? Right, I, I don't have it. I don't have the contract sitting right in front of me. Um, well, why don't you Why don't you just make it a motion okay. to accept that and read it, and okay. then, we'll, then we'll know. Um, I'll make a motion then to accept the revised proposal to design an aeration mixing system to reduce blue-green al algae um, and cyanobacteria in Devils Lake, Oregon to doc by, uh, Dr. Horn and Associates and HBH uh, engineers as edited. And that's to the amount of $99,000? To the amount of $99,500. Is that good enough? Is there a second? You want me to second that one? Okay. So done. Any other further discussion? Um, do you mind if I ask if, uh, for audience discussion from the board? I mean, just because we've got people here that. Is there any uh, comment from the audience that would like to? Nope. Okay. Oh, Mark, good. Mark, did you want to say something? You know, I, I talked to a lot of uh, people after our last meeting between this time and um, without exception, people were positive about the presentation and the direction we're headed. And so. I agree. Mark. Thank you. Just a quick note. Uh, Mark Hyland, 2170 Northeast Lake Drive. Um, I, I want to echo what Tina was saying about the you know, and maybe I just need to fully understand, as she mentioned or somebody mentioned earlier, there's like 57 pages or so, so it's kind of hard to get my hands around this in a fairly short period of time. Nice job, though, in getting that all put together. Um, is, so by, by going forward with him, you're still going to get that opportunity to have those $300,000 versions in front of us? Is that, is that what so. I'm understanding? I so. This contract would allow Dr. Horn, um, okay, provide the 17 methods and comes back and he says you should move forward with an aeration project. Mm -hmm. And the district says, okay, we like that, let's move forward with the aeration project. He would then design the project and it would be HBH that would make the specs suitable for bidding. And then anybody that has uh, a contracting license in Oregon mm -hmm. could bid on it. And the designs, as Dr. Horn has stated, uh, would be based on off-the-shelf materials. And then with the exception, potentially, again, and that was just the one caveat, because he thinks that uh, this one element is quite crucial. You know, it's like important piece that you would have to just buy X number of these associated, you know, bits to put in, the, put in your project, you know. It's like calling for, you know, so many nails. Okay, you need a thousand nails for this project. They got to be galvanized nails. Okay, well then you can't go out and buy other nails that don't fit that protocol. You have to buy those the ones that do. That would be the one. And he, the reason he said that is because um, one of his partners that would be in helping in the design, somebody that's done some aeration uh, in Wales and, and in Europe, uh, has a patent on that one nail for, a, for to just extend the. The, uh, the, the uh, analogy. So, but anybody can buy that. 
Anybody could buy that. So name. XYZ Aeration Company can get that diffuser or that yeah. ABC yeah. Aeration Company. Yeah, that, that's that my diffuser. understanding, absolutely. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm aware of the fact that, that um, oftentimes public bids or private bids even as well are made to the designer's you know, specifications because that's kind of what they want to do and that's how they want it to go because they're going to put their name on it and it's going to actually, you know, succeed or fail um, based on what they have in that in that bid. Um, I'm going to throw you back to the last meeting or to the meeting with Dr. Horn and I guess I asked the $10 million question which was what is the, what is the, the um, uh, What's the chances of, or what is the risk, fail, the, the failure or or success of this project? And I, when when somebody tells me they can't give a success or failure to that, I mean they can't say it's going to be successful or no, it's not going to be successful. As we look at the costs that are involved, as Brian you mentioned a little bit ago, I mean as your costs go up, you would assume that the that the success rate would also go up along with those costs because as we've found, you know, you quoted uh, Mr. Wagner that that had indicated that um, uh, that if you under-engineer a project, it's not going to do as well. Uh, you know, that it, you're, you're probably not going to have as good of opportunity to do as well. So I guess I, I, I just wanted to say I echo what Tina's saying there. I think we... we it just to make sure we're walking before we run. And I understand, Doc, I was I was pleased with Dr. Horn's presentation as well, but I also think that, that for $90,000 or, or more, we should be getting a little bit better um, pinpointed. I mean, even, even if it's on a scale of, scale of 1 to 10, I mean, if you can give me an 8, I'm good to go. Well, and you I know. think that we're he not you, he there. He gave you a 75%, Mark. He said that. I mean, you, you, pushed, you did a good job pushing them, and he said, he finally said, 75%. <laughs> right, right. He, he did. He did. And and I guess I did, but I didn't know what the number was. Not the 75%. I didn't know what the dollar amount was, though, at that point. I mean, we oh. he's gone from 1 to 2 million, potentially. Is that right? Well, I mean, am I hearing 4. that correctly? 4.5. Well, he said. 4.5. 500 to 1.9 million, depending on. And, and I Depending. think what you're asking for, if I, I mean, it's the same question we have um, or thinking about going forward is, um, is the technology to the point and the information out there to the point where we can design a project and go forward with it and be relatively confident of success of what our goal is? And I think that's what we think is, at least I think, yes. Okay. Well, and... and I would encourage you and everybody to stay really engaged when when we get this 17 point thing from Dr. Horn and and I'm sure Paul will have it on our website and and so forth because right. I mean to me that's when I really want input because that I mean we don't really have to make any decisions right now other than I I think there's been really good discussion to you know Brian's idea of the cover letter and and making sure that Dr. Horn understands what it is we're after. Mm -hmm. But but until we get at phase one from him, you know, we're in kind of a holding pattern. And, and I think that I think it's a good choice to, to move forward with that. But um, by, by all means, I wouldn't say for myself for sure, and I, I think I can speak for all of us pretty safely, that nobody's made a decision that we're, we're doing this. Yeah. We've made a decision okay. that we're... we're making the first step to do it to see if it'll work. Yeah. And if okay. we can design something that, that does. And, I mean, I yeah, I guess that's the thing that, that I would say is just stay stay engaged in, in the process from here on out, especially, okay. which I know you will. What I, how I feel about this is what we're really doing is we're contracting with Dr. Horn for the first phase of him evaluating all the different options coming with us to – a, a series of maybe rec possible recommendations um, and then if we move forward with any of those recommendations then we move to the design phase of the project and that's so and the cost for that first phase is three thousand dollars right stop at okay. three thousand dollars and I agree and I think that's a great deal too Brian uh, with having the stop points I mean I, I think that's that's 
critical to, to making that a success. So, great. Thanks. Thanks, Tom. Crispy 3184 multi sloop drive. What Bill was referencing when he was talking about the, uh, the level of sludge in the lake is the Devil's Lake Neighborhood Association uh, contracted to have a study done, and we provided that information to Paul and the district. And, and if Dr. Horn is proceeding on the premise that there's only two foot of sludge, the uh, study that we contracted for and that we provided showed that there were was I think an average depth of eight feet. That is quite a difference, two feet to eight feet, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and I would encourage the board to have Paul make sure. I'm really actually surprised that you don't know if Dr. Horn got that information. I know that he got it. I just you were asking if he reviewed it based on that. The, the actual question, and that's what I answered. So right. I didn't know if he had <laughs> reviewed it to I'm answer that okay. Bill asked. Yeah, so he yes did get it. Yes, so did. yes, he did get it, and it's still on our website. No, that's good, and, yeah. I, and I'm guessing if he only referenced two feet, he must not have read it. So I just want to make a point. There is a huge difference between two and eight feet if he's going on that basis. So um, I would just recommend that he is very aware of that. I was really surprised when I were you surprised about that, Paul? Well, I forget the actual what he actually said and what the context yeah. was, and so I'm I'm not extrapolating based on this recent now your conversation into that because, um, but I do know that you know Dr. Horn understands systems better than you know certainly I or I think anyone in the room okay. does, and um, you know that's kind of why we're leaning towards you know contracting with him because you know he is a ecological design. right oh no I'm not I'm not questioning what his his theory or or that I was just surprised that he said and I'm pretty sure he said that from the data that he had that he thought there was two to three feet and I don't know anywhere in the lake that there's only two to three feet well I, I think it's uh, it's important to re realize what he's what dr. Hunt's focused on number one he's focused on on destratification, which is what happens, you know, from the bottom of the water level, not in the sludge, but the bottom of the water to the to the top of the surface, and and breaking that right. ability of the cyanobacteria to go up and down, um, and then the the number two thing is getting dissolved oxygen to the to the sediment water interface, which it doesn't matter how deep the sludge is, it's that interface that matters if. If you get if you can get enough oxygen there, and it's proven to be a real challenge, um, but if you can get enough, then you, then you uh, then you start breaking down um, the, uh, the the sediment layer. But it, it, whether it's you know two feet deep or eight feet deep, I mean the process is the same. And so I I, I would suggest he probably wasn't very focused on what the sediment layer is. It doesn't really matter to him. It matters to me. <laughs> I want it out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So we have the motion on the table. Are there any other comments from the audience? Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a motion on the table and it's seconded. Um, any other further discussion? My only consideration is the, the 100000 for his engineering part. That doesn't give us a green light to proceed other than allowing bidders to bid on it. Uh, environmentally, why wouldn't Fish and Wildlife uh, say yes? Why wouldn't the state of Oregon say yes? I don't know that, but um, in my dealings with it, I've obtained a few permits and been denied one, and I'm um, kind of falling short on feeling comfortable enough to move forward with the survey for that amount of money uh, even though he's world renowned and a uh, heck of a guy um, maybe from what I've been hearing it, it sounds relatively positive but I'm, I'm just a little skeptical and like uh, Tina said earlier I'm just a little nervous on proceeding without there's so much gray area there it's, to me it sounds like we're throwing up a 
pile of money into a fan. Well, one thing that we could just think about um, is that once we have this initial um, report from Dr. Horn is sometime with regard to that, we should initiate some kind of conversation with um, with the uh, with the Army Corps engineers, Department of State lands, and especially um, the National Marine Fisheries to see. So if, if prior they, to doing that, though, pri pri you, prior you to engineering, pri prior to hands to talk to them. No, prior to doing the actual engineering of the whole thing, or sometime, you know, hey, we're thinking about doing this. Do you see? Do you see hurdles for the general concept of what we're talking about? Does that make sense? Yeah, kind so like, you're talking kind of basically like a pre-application. Pre pre-application. did with the uh, D River dredging. Right, as a, as a concept, not so, as the specific design. And, and we've, um, dating back into, <clears throat> I'd have to check the emails, but uh, 2014 probably, started those discussions in a scoping um, uh, work exercise that we've, we've engaged in. and. Um, we've heard back from ODF and W in that regard, uh, which was positive. Uh, you know, they, they want to see what you're actually proposing, but that was the first positive thing, and so that was that was a big thing. And, and NOAA Fisheries is is often on the f and in the federal level, they're going to take a, a back seat to the state because if the state's not going to approve some, same thing with your grass carp application. Mm -hmm. NOAA Fisheries isn't concerned about your grass carp application if ODF and W has a given the go ahead. So they, you know, for that reason. Um, and the situation they did. No, they didn't. They didn't. They were the last ones to comment. That's what I'm saying. It's like they're going to wait until it's. Oh, I thought yeah. you. Were, I thought you yeah. were saying as long as ODF and W is fine, they're fine. No, but they're. But they they would take a back seat to them in process, typically, as well as in action. Not that their actions are going to necessarily be exactly the same, but. Um, often, without without ODF and W support, you're you're sunk in either way. And the state is going to be a bit more proactive in, in the process with you. And with, you know, we've got an email. I was looking at it yesterday um, from uh, fish biologist, uh, district fish biologist down here in Newport, um, John Spangler. That yeah, he's like yeah, I think this is something that aeration again. We're talking again about aeration. Yeah, he was he was favorable for that. Um, does that mean that NOAA Fisheries says yes? No, it doesn't mean that. And, and Bill, you're absolutely right. Um, permitting is, you can get denied on a permit. And part of the, the value, though, of this 17 method assessment is in your permit application, you have to give a um, alternative, an it's alternate analysis. And so here's your alternate, your alternate options, do nothing, and deal with cyanobacteria blooms that affect fish and wildlife in a negative way. Uh, add algicides, which affect fish and wildlife in a negative way. You know, add alum, which can kill fish. They killed a bunch up in Washington, even though if you buffer it right, apparently they don't kill fish. But alum, unbuffered, will kill a lot of fish. You know, and aluminum is toxic to fish. So, what about the bioenzymes that are that don't hurt fish? Um, Bioenzymes are maybe it's a burgeoning industry, but um, I haven't had a lot of, uh, of reputable limnologists promote bioenzymes as a, as a technology per se. Um, and you know, bacterial augmentation, kind of in that same realm, um, is is you know maybe right in the short term you can like jumpstart a system, but if if you're not providing aeration, the, it does it on its own, though, right? If right. It, if it works properly. Right. And if you don't do the aeration right, even if you bioaugment right the first time, it's not going to take. Right. So um, I don't put a lot of weight in, in bioaugmentation. Um, the enzymes, maybe that's maybe that's an emerging industry. I'm not as comfortable to maybe discount that, I guess. But um, you know, biology is out there. Well, have you ever personally done any experimentation with anything with our any area of the lake with the muck? Like a hands-on experiment? Um, could we buy a bucket of those pellets and 
see what they do or I've never dumped a bunch you know yeah no <clears throat> you know, so dumped a bunch of pellets in the lake and said so we don't really don't know then personally definitely do not have not done that no right huh so but that's you know that's a consideration if you want to look at that maybe that is something that 17 methods say is the best tool I don't know but my guess would be it won't because of the magnitude of the sediment I think or. frankly just because of the value of the technology that's a guess yeah. we did ask dr. Horn or somebody asked dr. Horn maybe even me about that very thing and he said you know if you introduce the oxygen the, the bacteria should reproduce and it's not necessary, but I don't think he said they don't work. But it's not necessary to pay for them if you if you introduce the oxygen. Oxygen, you get the same benefit. Paul, um, Bill's comment reminded me of uh, I thought it was in HBH's contract where. I, the line item that's that's reduced is not as the the permitting services. Is that right? Or am I wrong about? It? So, what I have is the current one. Um, the what was reintroduced back into this. Um, so, permitting services still exist in there for ten thousand eight hundred dollars. Right. And it was maybe twenty-two thousand or right. something. Right. That's the one that was reduced. That's what I'm saying. The the work effort associated was it was also reduced though too. And I'm yeah. looking for. Well, I thought there was a statement in here that said that they would not attend any permitting meeting. Correct. Yeah. Where where is that? What, um. I know I saw. Yeah, I it, saw it too, and so I, I assume it's probably just under permitting task. It will be the owner's responsibility to fill out permits and coordinate meetings with all agencies. HPH will not attend any permitting meetings. HPH will provide drawings and calculations. Where, where is it? It's under task two, just after the bullet points on page two. Okay. I looked right past that about three times. Okay. So why, I mean, I, I, I can't imagine why. I mean, it, there's... Ten thousand eight hundred dollar line item in the bit in, in their proposal. Um, if that can that the time that they spend attending permitting meetings, which might be really be helpful, um, can can be included in that uh, ten thousand eight hundred. I mean, why should that be specifically excluded? I guess is my point. If if um, if we don't ask them to do other things, maybe that they're anticipating having to do in the course of providing permitting services, um, and there's time and money left in that line item, why wouldn't they attend uh, uh, permitting meetings with various agencies? I, I, I think they just don't anticipate that there's enough money there for them to do that. So that's why they removed that. Could be the biggest thing is they switched back and added task seven back to the the bid. So bid assistance services wasn't in version two. And so we requested that that be reintroduced, that be task seven. And okay, well, what, what, I'm, what I'm driving at is the top of task two is the permitting services. HBH will assist in obtaining the following permits and it lists permits from six different governmental agencies why can't that assistance that they're going to provide um, include uh, attending uh, meetings if if the time requirement uh, fits within the 10th? I mean, I don't see the point of it being specifically excluded. It, it's just that in their estimation that they were going to need, I think the original bid was around 118000 or something. And so to get at under our $100,000 requirement for the direct appointment, this is the sacrifices that they could make in, in, the, in what they saw the project needs, you know, and just pull back on that. Um, 
you know, that's just what they're they're saying they can do for for the 10-8 is 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 do everything but those attending those meetings. So, um, you know, that's just what their bid is. Well, I, I honestly, you know, when we when we started this process, you know, the interest was to try to do the permitting side in house because we thought we could probably, um, by and large, do that end of it, and and so we didn't even ask for any of it at all. Now, uh, it's their expert experience, and you know, that says you know you're going to need a chunk of money in there, and they they bid twenty two thousand, I think, for that because they were anticipating doing basically the whole of it. Um, which would probably be on par with the amount of time, energy, and investment that we will be making commensurately. So, you know, that's going to get spent somehow, but it's not going to get spent on this contract. And if we thought it was imperative that they show up to the meeting or maybe we hire Liza to, to be that liaison for us, is there any reason why we, we can't hire that done? To have... To have like Liza, no, we could have somebody. Yeah, you could spend. Now you don't want to creep and spend money with them, though. That's kind of where you're. But if you had some work that you're doing internally, I mean, like, if we approve this as written, and then and then it becomes glaringly obvious that they need to show up to a permitting meeting, if you know it's make or break, whether they show up or not, we can't call them up and say, "Hey, how much is it for you guys to show up to this meeting?" Well, <laughs> well, I mean, I, no, I, I think would, we could. Why couldn't we? I mean, I know that maybe the contract ends up going over 100000 but That's the biggest question I'd have. Well, the other thing that I, I guess my experience is how many meetings are there with, I mean, it's, right. it's, it's, it's totally, I don't see it being five. It's, it's, you know, it's so like, all written and then it's rejected or accepted. And there's, I mean, there's not a, there's a hey, prelim me meeting. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you need to change this here. They don't, they're yeah. not going to say that they're going to either say, no, this is not going to work or. Yeah. That, yeah. I don't see it being like five meetings. They don't give you any help. Right. Well, it's, there's, there's it's, on, it's on us to do the, the application, and their participation would be part of that application, and that's in there. You know, right. just going and talking to you no know, fisheries is something that we would be doing and have already initiated. Like I said, back in 2014 when we started considering this project, put a scope of work out. We sent it to Ken Fippen, the you know, Portland director, and, and you know, DQ. And, sent, you know, we did this pre-scoping work to try to get at, you know, what are some of the, the big hiccups around this. Again, which as you, you know, re, you know, should be aware of if you don't recall right now, is an easement to do it, to have that on state lands. That's another th thing out there that is not a given. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at permits being not a given, an easement, or at least one that you can afford, which would be basically a free one, mm -hmm. uh, is not a given. <laughs> And that, you know, I mean, you know, as far as like not have you, you put the paperwork in, you know, you pay, pay the application fee, but to actually get it, you know, is is not a given. We have, we're going to lobby for it, and, and is my it safe thinking will get. To say that, it, that when when we get to that bullet point, we we can negotiate or or discuss the importance of, you know, where that ten eight is spent. I mean, it's not going to be spent before we know whether we need them in a meeting or not necessarily. Yeah, I think it's mostly just moving. Um, I, you know, what it says is it's about like a 50% design for, so you can get that application going. Right. You know? And so it's work associated with the application. So, again, the meeting, I, I didn't anticipate them I mean, I think it would be great if they wanted to show up, but I didn't anticipate that being part of this when we were originally scoping it. Um, but, I, you know, certainly wouldn't turn down the help. Sure. <laughs> you know, that's, you know, you want people on your side in the room, right? Um, but... Well, and um, people that they may listen to... Well, that talk the language. You know, right. if you're talking engineers... But then again, we're talking more on the ecological side. Yeah. What's the negative impacts? What's the positive impacts? Right. They're so on the pipes and So it may be better to such. have a Liza type person there yeah, anyhow. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, they may have, you know, uh, fish biologists on staff too or something that they typically send to something like this. So I don't, I don't know. But, but yeah, those less so, 
you know, how many nails I need. That's right. the engineering side, and that's kind of their, more of their skill set. And that's why we're hiring them, potentially. Is. And there is um, the language in task one that, that says, a kickoff meeting with the pertinent stakeholders will be scheduled. Will be scheduled. Its purpose will be to review execution, discuss project elements of the design and other aspects of the project execution, roles, coordination. Well, I guess uh, now I'm reading. That sounds like there's one meeting with pertinent stakeholders. Um, maybe that could be the uh, you know the pre-app yeah, kind of meeting. meeting. You know. Um, if you want to call the agencies involved a stakeholder. Yeah, I, I think you fairly could. I mean, it may be, uh, maybe that's not, wasn't their assumption, but it certainly <laughs> could be yours, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know, but it does say, you're right. It's, it's a loophole I can drive a truck through. Paul. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it sorry. is a kickoff meeting. Yeah. Right. Well, I think you know these guys have a uh, have a, a, a good reputation. I think they're um, pretty square shooters, and I do think that if you know um, outside the terms of this contract, if we wanted to engage them in another um, small contract to appear at a meeting that we thought was essential. Um, the way I've read the statute, and I, I got to admit it's been a while, and uh, I didn't, uh, I don't remember exactly what it said, but it basically talking about you can't contract for more than the the hundred thousand and do a direct hire, but um, we're not contracting for more than a hundred thousand. We may have to enter into a second kind of ancillary contract for another amount under a hundred thousand, but. You know, I just can't believe that, uh, you know, the state of Oregon at that point is going to be, oh, you shouldn't have hired those guys for, a, you know, a thousand dollars to come to a meeting with you. So, and maybe we'll have four ninety nine. You'd be safe. You know, huh? if it was four hundred ninety nine dollars, you'd be safe. Yeah, because then you'd still be under. It'd be better. Yeah, it'd be better. <laughs> um, and it it may be such that um, what they're trying to avoid with that. Um, direct appointment cap is is you saying oh we'll, we'll do a project for eight hundred eighty five thousand here and the next another one that's forty five thousand and they're really the same project and you scoped them to be the the one project but you broke it out because you, you felt it was in your interest but th then that would be running afoul and so where I think we sit in a good respect is we did not we haven't sought that element. And so if we needed to go seek that element because we reevaluated our own capacity and said, okay, we need $1,000 <laughs> of permitting um, help, I think we'd have a pretty good argument. However, I'm, I'm, I'm under the impression that we should, you know, be moving forward with this 99.5 and, you know, and, and, and kind of work as with whatever investment we're already trying and to make. And we had here. to work hard to get them down to 99.5. Yeah. I mean... If you think we're spending too much money, we could have been spending a lot more. Thank, thank the Lord for the uh, the hundred thousand dollar limit to get a little lever to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I, I think that we've had some good discussion, Bill, did you have anything else or uh, better move forward than not to move at all? Uh, there we go. <laughs> um, so we have a motion to. Contract. I don't have the motion in front of you. You already right made now. your motion. And, That's fine. And, and That's so we need a vote. And so all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Go ahead and all right. take mm -hmm. care of that. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Well, I think this has been a good process, too. Um, it's been lengthy at times, but. Uh, it's going to be longer still. It, it is going to be longer still, and I, and I appreciated your comment earlier, frankly, about you know if we're if we march along and we got money and everything else, we're looking at 2018 for installation, and then even more so that 2020 vision that you put forward, the 2020 in a couple of years' time of actually having it in the ground and seeing the benefits, because there is you know lag, you know potentially, and even upset. Essentially, when you introduce 
something like aeration. And so that I think I, I just I think that that was wise that you did say that because it is true. Well, let's move on to D River dredging. Then I think that's next up. Okay. Can you give us an update on that? I can. Um, so th the one element that's um, there's a wrinkle right now, and the wrinkle is, um, and and I haven't had a chance to to speak with um, the the owner of the fill site. Um, been reaching out to them, but the site that's been chosen at this point, you know, it's in the city limits. You know, that is it's a, it's zone residential. Unless there is a building project there, bringing material and you know the the materials associated with the building project, um, there's just no zoning allowance for doing such a thing of piling a bunch of sand on a parcel inside the city limits in that zone. So we need to deal with that. And there may be a couple of things we can do. Maybe the intention is that it's a you know development site and if that's the case then you know and have you we'll, talked to him? Like I said, I, I tried and we haven't been able to con connect. Because I know that the the intention of that material there is to improve the site so it is buildable. Okay. So I think then the step is having maybe going in tangent is that um, development plan. Having a development plan being at least in process associated with the fill. Because that's 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 then the allowance that would provide um, the opportunity at least for to fill to, to go there. But so just there's no there's no zoning for site improvement on a, a residential parcel? Not just like fill apparently. You know the Planning director and, and uh, public works looked at this, and uh, it, it's just not an allowance. And it, it's it's really becomes more of a construction zone. You know, that's not something that you can you can't have that kind of activity in a residential zone. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really so. If in fact that is the, the plan, and that's that's what we need to continue to develop, then there would be potentially the the capacity. If there isn't. Then we, we have lots of else. other sites available. That's that's what we got. We're going to have to consider if that's the case that it doesn't work. Um, you know, maybe it's a industrial site where you know, like a sand and gravel site kind of thing. Because you know, and and the, the biggest news. And so I'm giving you the bad news right now because I had great news for you, and I still have great great news or good news associated with the material, and that was the. Sediment evaluation that was done, the sediment evaluation, level one sediment evaluation that was done, was successful in determining its allowance for that, this material to be um, disposed of. We got confirmation in sand. It's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can put it in. You could put it in, a, you know, aquatic system, and that's you know, it's a big statement, you know, to have that. So, um, if it were that we needed another fill site, at least you've got fill that is. Uh, Uncontaminated, you know, shown to be so. so that's and you can put fill on any uh, city ordinances, I understand, but but with regards to the um, the removal fill permit from DEQ, fill is not um, <clears throat> prohibited from going anywhere. Now, if there's you know ordinances in a city, yes, that, that would supersede it. But I mean, for instance, I could take it on my property and there's no, there's no state ordinance that says that can't happen. Right, right. The removal fill process is associated with wetlands. So that's where. Right. The removal end of it. But as far fill, as. And the fill side too. Yeah. Filling wetlands is also. Right. Requires the permit. So, so it, as long so if you're only are you so oh, what if we if we gave you a site that was not in the city limits and was not in a wetland would the hurdle be crossed and it would be simple I think so yeah uh, how that, much simpler simple, how much simpler yeah um, considerably simpler because okay you that's know what um, yeah that would be uh, you know Checking, of course, with the county and their allowances for whatever zoning, you know, that parcel may be under. 
you know, but yeah, I think I think so. So it's it, it is it is that yeah, you, it's like the city or the county zoning issue that needs to come into this. So yeah, that's that's basically the update. Um, so um, in the future, Paul, if you come up against something like that that has to do with especially fill type stuff, mm -hmm. call me and I I can get you an answer in thirty seconds. I love it. So I will. yeah, and I'll have this answer to you by tomorrow. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ch Mr. Chairman. Can I, uh, if we're done with the, uh, are we done with the, the dredging here? I was going to make one statement. The only thing was that it's nice that uh, the no test determinations for 10 years so that, mm -hmm. I mean, we're going for this not for just one time, but a possibility of, of several times. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's a real positive thing. And, and that actually is uh, reminds me of another thing I've been reaching out. Sim similar question I've been trying to find out is, is if this potential land order would take more than the expected 2,000 cubic yards from the first batch effectively because if you do have an opportunity to do it two or three times then maybe you got 6,000 cubic yards over the life of this permit so uh, in your pursuit Tina I throw that cap that additional you know number out there like if if it, like we're applying and they encourage us to apply for a extended permit effectively mm -hmm. and uh, and like Ken's saying is the sentiment evaluation criteria is good as long as the use doesn't change um, for up to 10 years, nine point something years right now. So now phase one's done. What phase are we in now? The phase, how about two then? Two? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're in phase two then. Um, oh, you, you mean of that sediment evaluation framework? No, zero, we're done. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that, we, we completed it. There's like nine different categories. Yeah, so. Uh, so we're done with the sediment framework approval, and now we're 80% into the removal fill permit correct. application. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, the level one of that sediment evaluation framework, um, if you didn't get it done there, there would have been a level two. And so we avoided that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is substantial. That's like develop a monitoring plan, implement a monitoring plan, get good results from the monitoring, you know. Et cetera, et cetera, to get the approval. So we we were able to skip that with our, um, I think, a very comprehensive level one submission. So Paul, what will you need? Uh, let's just hypothetically say that this is going to go on my property, and I am in the county. Do you need something from me as a property owner for me to obtain something from the county, we'll or is state statute good enough? Well, we'll definitely need your signature on the application as we would any sure. any of the property owners associated with this. And, and but to move this, m move the removal fill permit application to 100%, what, what is it you need? Um, basically, that confirmed fill space. Okay. You know, and then uh, redeveloping some of the application, changing language associated with the old fill space into the new one. Developing a few maps associated with the old space into the new one. Okay. So basically, that eighty percent drops a little bit because it's kind of going. You just take a couple steps back to get. But it'll move to one hundred percent more quickly. Yeah, because you you avoid the question mark of not being able to get okay. the city or the county's, you know, uh, approval. And the county or the city, it's just a local planning district has to approve this and be in compliance with their comp plan or whatever. And so. In the city, at that point, it wouldn't be. So, yeah, so when it. when a piece of property is excavated and material is moved from that to another property, the county doesn't have to. Why why would the county have to um, be involved in, in this? Is it because it's, it's part coming of the from public, public lands? Permit. Okay, so it's it's a specific requirement of that plan. It's not of that permit. Yes. Or that permit. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I should have brought this up at the um, after we um, approved the um, aeration contract, but there was the matter of the uh, the cover letter that we want that I would like to see, and I think other board members would like to see sent with the um, with the signed contract um, to the effect. And I, I've got three points I'd like to see in there um, that. Um, 
you know, again, we we, we want to encourage the the uh, design and, and the specs to be formulated in, in, in uh, such a manner to uh, uh, promote as broad uh, a range of um, responsive and capable bidders as possible. Mm -hmm. That um, we want a chance to evaluate phase one. Uh, before we proceed with phase two. And uh, that, uh, well, uh, that we would, you know, in, in, would, we don't want to make the mistake of under, under uh, designing and under building. He, uh, you know, a, a couple of times he mentions that he, he's sensitive to the cost, and I'm glad he's sensitive to cost, but um, I don't want to, I would like to see, I prefer a design that's uh, over, uh, a system that's over designed and over built to one that's under designed and under built. However, you want to say that. Yeah, no, Maybe I Maybe give I him, you know, feel a little bit more like he can really design a system that he really thinks is going to work. <laughs> right. Yeah, we, you know, if you guys want to do that, we could add that. Obviously, number two is already done. That's in that. Right. contract both Dr. Horn's um, section which he wrote and then also in uh, HPHs so that's th number two sorted we already got that confirmed about only doing phase one before moving to phase two so that one's sorted the the uh, the other one I think is is the first one again they encourage you know design and specs to promote uh, you know I think that's that's a really good thing to convey and for his additional understanding just a really important to me yeah yeah so we want we want we want to be able to give a lot of people a lot of opportunity to bid on this that was that's the goal and then and then the third one um i mean yeah i mean i i think that that's a fair point too you know they, i think it makes more sense particularly with the aeration to not go cheap and you know quick and dirty and try to build something just so that you you know you can afford it in the first blush that you think you can afford um, well and is there a problem with introducing too much oxygen into a body of water <laughs> at I've the very very high water. end yes yeah so I mean not like if we overbuilt the system by 20 percent we're not no and the only changing yeah. the there is a dissolved water. oxygen standard for uh, releasing right. releasing water from a dam, say Which for we're instance. way below. Yeah, you're, you're not going to super saturate and basically. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 we wish I you could have that problem. In in yeah. an oxygenation system, if you were injecting oxygen and you didn't have a, much of a demand for oxygen, then yeah, there's That's a potential. That's the cone thing that he was. Talking yeah, that about, would be a, that an example. That we're not really. A candidate that for. well potentially not right again that's a, one of the 17 one of methods the things, right but yeah he kept but referring to that's probably not th that's probably you wish you had that problem I know exactly because having you know a uh, problem of super saturation would be easily resolved <laughs> well you know in thinking about this really the last that uh, over designing is is an or to maximize the design so that it will, it will work um, I think where other people have got in trouble is then they they look at pr probably from their past experiences they like at Cherry Creek it sounds like they made some financial decisions and they ended up with a system that didn't quite work right and as a board we need to make sure that that as we look forward to a design that we're gonna like you say over design and over well, I like your word. I like your word better. Maximize. Maximize yeah, right. that that is a better word than yeah. over design. Yeah, right. Absolutely, because it <laughs> gives the wrong impression over yeah. design. Right. Right. But you know, and and I think that he was sensitive to that as as other tools, like you know, the simple thing of pouring, you know, additional four by eight bit of concrete and having your building fit two blowers. You know, that was a way of accommodating uh, future expansion. You know, which, if you didn't do that, well, then you wasted, you know, all that other housings that you could have, you know, doubled up on. So, absolutely, I think, you know, I mean, I'm getting nods on, I think, all of this. Uh, yeah, well, at least two out of three out of four. I mean, Bill, are you comfortable with this cover letter? 
not even put you on the spot too much. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, everyone else was nodding, so I just wanted to check in with you before we move forward. Great. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I've got. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add. But. Okay. Uh, next would be committees. I'm not sure, Paul, how we want to handle this. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, there's – so what I've did is – um, you know, in the, in the original staff report, I, in, in last month, I produced like a, basically a draft of, of what, you know, uh, a policy might look like associated with a blank, fill in the blank committee. And then Brian, I think, um, very wisely made some, you know, serviceable edits to that and additions and came up with like a better template and then provided his own, uh, you know, portion associated with the sewer and submitted that to all the board members. The board members got to see that. Um, David Skirvin, who's not here tonight for, again, excused absence, um, he did the same for his um, events and uh, events. Communication and, committee. Thank you. Communication. Uh, Tina, you did as well, and, and Kent was able to get one in. I, I don't know, if Bill, if you. Still have, finishing up mine. Finishing up one. Well, so basically, all we have that would be different. In all of those, is the is it just the purpose? Let me check the uh, the establishment and purpose. Oh, excuse me. There is potentially a the membership, membership variance. I too. changed my membership. Yes, right. And I and I have that. So do you have one. Yep. <laughs> Maybe one. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so what? So what? One option I think we could do is to introduce uh, a, a resolution moving forward for one version and then do uh, just suggest the potential different purposes and membership if that's the case as it would be with the one you're proposing and have those discussions first off just because your fellow board member proposes this doesn't mean you need to accept it you know um, you know there may be uh, Maybe seven members is too many for a sewer committee. Maybe five is too little for, you know, I mean, of those other things, maybe there isn't enough, maybe you're giving too much latitude to the committee. You don't want to give them uh, this purpose, or maybe you haven't given them enough. Um, so have those discussions, and then one by one, either establish one or, or recommend changes and, um, and uh, you know, establish it at that point, or we can come back at another meeting and, and look at reestablishing them too. I, I, w I would move that we um, approve or accept, I guess approve, um, the, the committees put before us as, as written by each board member uh, with the exception of bills that isn't done yet, but we can do that next meeting. And um, and then, you know, at any time, I, I don't see why we can't bring a specific one forward if one of us decides we want to change ours or if we decide that Kent did a really bad job designing his. Um, but I, I see for that. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Kent. Um, yeah, let's get it on the road. Yeah, and so um, – you're absolutely right. There's no reason you can't change this. Um, and so I think the best way, though, is to at least, you know, announce basically what, you know, one, two, three, and four of these purposes and, you know, criteria associated with the sewer is, for instance. And we can do that now, and then it, you can have uh, a bit of discussion, and then otherwise you haven't even really vetted the right. vetted it at all. So Did that, you um – happen to or do you have it electronically my committee because I appeared to print everybody else's but mine I have yours did uh, old school paper oh. size right here oh really yeah I've got a paper. what I did is I actually converted them to actual resolutions oh. and then added a signature line to okay to um, because my original intent was to just develop policies and then you would adopt the policy with the resolution which is another way you could have done this um, so can we have those so Kent can read them and we can yeah, just approve absolutely. them? So, one, two, three, four. And then this is David's. I had a suggestion. 
just a change on yours. One, one word. Dying on. I printed both versions. Uh, that's the sad thing. Which I had a just a suggested change on yours too. Just uh, we'll talk about that. And then here would be either. It's um, instead of. Uh, Testing only during the summer months. Oh, okay. I figure why. Okay. Uh, I it, but I yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I know you got it right from the fact that that's the pri primary time we're sampling, but if we wanted help in the winter time, might as well allow the committee to give that, I guess, is all I was thinking. <clears throat> so the best way just read the resolution for the purpose for each. I think so. I think that, you know, and I think in general the purposes um, are the main. That's the, that's the powers you're kind of, you know, giving away or, or de delegating is associated with those things. And um, the powers, uh, you might le read the powers section too. I mean, you could read one all the way through if you really just want to streamline and just do it. And then you could do the individual subsets that are different. But that's also, you know, four pages. But yeah, I, th I think that I'll read the establishment and purpose and then the powers. Um, one should, time, at least, yeah. yeah. I'll do that for each one. Okay. Um, so uh, this resolution is for the establishment of the governance of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Save Our Shorelines slash Water Monitoring Committee. Um, the establishment and purpose be it resolved that Save Our Shorelines and Water Monitoring Committee of Devil's Lake Water Improvement District, DWLID, is hereby established for the purpose of, one, promoting the establishment of increased shore, shoreline vegetation through the public's utilization of the district's SOS funding program. Two, the collection, testing, and monitoring of lake water quality and three, reporting its findings to the DLWID Board of Directors. The committee is advisory to the DLWID Board of Directors and shall be considered a public body for the purposes of the Oregon Public Meetings Law and shall be subject to all the provisions of that law as embodied by ORS 192.610 through 192.690. The committee is advisory to the DLWID Board of Directors and shall be considered a public body for the purposes of the Oregon Public Meetings Law and shall be subject to all provisions of that law as embodied in ORS 192.610 through 192.690. <clears throat> shall I do membership and everything too? Um, is it yeah, well the membership one is different for one of them. Um, you know, I think that establishing it okay, makes I'll, sense. I'll do membership for, for the first one here. The committee shall consist of seven members. Um, the board shall appoint persons who meet the qualifications of this subsection. Lincoln County voter registration records may be used to determine the residency as may the Lincoln County assessor's records. Qualifications. Uh, one. One board member shall be appointed from the DLWID Board of Directors. Two members of the committee shall be electors of the district, meaning that they are eligible voters residing in the district's boundaries. Three, two members shall be property owners within the district's, district. Excuse me. These individuals may or may not be electors of the district. And four, two members may be at large uh, selected from the general public. Any member any committee member may be removed from the committee by a majority vote of the DLWID Board of Directors. <clears throat> and let's Maybe I should inter interject. Um, I put a, f a fourth paragraph in, in mine about okay. the officers, okay. because only because throughout the other parts of this, there's re a reference to a chair and a, and a vice chair. So because of that, I just put a little D in for, uh, for um, officers and said, 
The uh, committee members shall nominate and elect the chairperson, vice chairperson, and secretary treasurer and assign the duties um, of each officer. I really don't like how formalistic this all sounds, but we do have to comply with the public meeting law. And for this part, I mean, we need to, apparently need a chair and vice chair just because of the rest of the language, and I threw in a secretary treasurer because, you know, in case somebody has to keep track of some money or something. Someone so. keep. Or minutes. Uh, somebody, you know, we have an obligation to, to keep minutes. Um, I guess that person would have the responsibility of finding somebody to do that or bringing a tape recorder or something. So anyway, that right. item D is uh, added for that reason. Okay. Terms of service. For the initial committee appointments, three members shall serve three-year terms, two shall serve two-year terms, and two shall serve one-year terms as designated by the chair. On expiration of initial members' terms, subsequent members' terms shall be three years. Appointments to vacancies of unexpired terms shall be for the remainder of the term of the vac vacated position. Um, I'm going to skip the vacancies, um, notice of location of meetings. We're going to apply um, until we get down to um, powers. Uh, the committee shall have all the powers reasonably necessary and appropriate to initiate actions to carry out the purposes subject to the approval of the board. Prior approval of, of committee action by the board shall not be required, provided, however, any committee member may request board approval or disapproval of the, of the action before or after the action. Any action of the committee or its members shall be presumed to be within the power of the committee unless specifically approved by the board. Disapproved. Right. Disapro excuse me, disapproved by the board. Thank you. Uh, examples of duties uh, in mind, I say examples of duties in include but are not limited to advise the board on matters related to the granting of funds available through the district Save Our Shoreline program. B, promote, recommend, and review plans by property owners to improve their waterfront footprint. C, collect and test water samples for water quality monitoring. D, help host and maintain um, water quality signs around the lake. And E, collect data on lake temperature and water level. That is for the SOS, SOS and Water Monitoring Committee. Next, we have. I wouldn't change a thing. Next, we have the establishment of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Septic, in septic Inspection Committee. So, so I might just, yeah. if we might just look at just adopting one by one, since they are individual resolutions, um, that would probably make sense. Um, yeah. That one, you know. So I move what, we what adopt num that. Oh. What number is this? Number You've got four. it on there. Oh. Uh, let's see. This is a resolution 2016-05. I move that we adopt resolution 2016-05 as read. I second the motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All opposed? Resolution. 2016-05 passes. And written. yeah, the order just, it will be a little funky because I just started with the one that right. I got first, which right. was Brian's, which will be 02. And so just FYI for the recorder. <laughs> okay, this, the next resolution we have before the board is resolution 2016-04, establishment of the governance of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Septic Inspection Committee. I'll read the purpose and then I'll read its powers. Um, because really the purpose and the membership on this one the powers are all the, the same without the same. you didn't have any additional right. things right. very good um, be it resolved that a septic inspection committee of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District is hereby established for the purpose of one developing a voluntary septic inspection around Devil's Lake two providing information relevant to the voluntary septic inspection around Devil's Lake to stakeholders and seeking relevant input from stakeholders. Three, determining the level of stakeholder support for volunteer septic inspection around Devil's Lake. And four, 
reporting its findings to the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Board of Directors. What's two? Sorry. Two was providing information relevant to the voluntary septic inspection around Devil's Lake to stakeholders and seeking relevant in input from stakeholders. It's exactly your language, Brian, that you use for the sewer, except I put septic inspection in there. <laughs> it must be good. Does it really sound good. really good to you? <laughs> uh, membership on this committee. Uh, membership. The, the committee shall consist of five members. The board shall appoint persons who meet qualifications of this subsection. Lincoln County voter registration records may be used to determine residency, as may the Lincoln County Assessor's records. Qualifications. One. One member shall be appointed from the Devil's Lake Board of Directors. The other four members of the committee shall be electors of the district, meaning they are eligible voters residing in the district's boundaries. And any, com any committee member may be removed from the committee by a majority of the vote of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Board of Directors. Officers, the committee member shall nominate and elect chairperson, vice chairperson, and secretary treasurer and assign the duties of each such officer. So I think that the change that I had from your original one was you said that all five members should be electors of the district. And if one member is from the board, a board member doesn't have to be an elector. So I put oh, that four, right. yeah. So I put that four members would be an elector and I then the appointment. Yeah, I know it's kind of interesting thing. On the, like, like a budget committee has to be an elector, yeah. but the board member doesn't have to be, no. Okay. For our, for our district. Right. You know. I think everything else is the same. Yeah. I'd like to move that we uh, accept as written uh, resolution 2016-04. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution 2016-04 passes unanimously. Um, Resolution 2016-02, the establishment of governance of Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Sewer Committee. Uh, be it resolved that a sewer committee of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District is hereby established for the purpose of, one, reviewing legal options and requirements for extension of sewer around Devil's Lake, two, providing information relevant to the extension of sewer around Devil's Lake, around Devil's Lake to stakeholders and seeking relevant input from stakeholders. Three, determining the level of stakeholder support for extension of sewer around Devil's Lake. And four, reporting its findings to the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Board of Directors. The committee is advisory to the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Board and shall be considered a public body for the purposes of Oregon Public Meeting Law and shall be subject to all provisions of that law as embodied in ORS 192.160 through 192.690. Um, I think membership of the committee is yeah. the same as the first. Right. Okay. And I think everything else is the same. Powers, are, oh, powers are, yeah. Powers. The general power statement. Right. I think yeah. Without your limitations, because okay. I want to have unlimited power. <laughs> See that? Okay. <laughs> powers. The committee shall have all the powers reasonably necessary and appropriate to initiation initiate actions to carry out its purposes subject to the approval of the board. Prior approval of committee action by the board shall not be required, provided, however, any committee member may request board approval or disapproval of action before or after the action. Any action of the committee or its members shall be presumed to be within the power of the committee unless specifically disapproved by the board. Yeah, I mean, the intent there is just not to have to worry about running back to the board and every, right. for everything that you do, but I don't think anybody's gonna go crazy here, so. Okay, do I hear a motion to I'll make a motion to approve that wonderfully written uh, resolution 2016-02. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? 
Motion passes unanimously. Uh, let's see. Okay. Resolution 2016-03, establishment of the governance of Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Events and Communication Committee. Establishment and purpose. Be it resolved that the Events and Communications Committee of the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District is hereby established for the purposes of, one, providing advice in the formulation of communications and information policy, positions, and proposals. Two, identifying opportunities for new events, promoting events, and engaging the community stakeholders to support the events around the lake. Three, ensure all local events are listed in the community calendars. Four, draft communications for consideration by the board and five, reporting its findings to the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District Board of Directors. I have a question. Did you revise that? Because mine says ensure all local bridge events. Yeah, it was a yeah. Miss, that was a typo. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 I saw that too. I talked to David today on the phone and oh, okay. asked him about that, and he said, oh, that's sorry. <laughs> okay. There was uh, two, two typos I changed. On that. Okay. I was wondering about that too. Yeah. And membership uh, of the committee shall consist of seven board members, as with uh, a, a past resolution. And powers of the committee are in alignment with the other powers that were stated earlier. Move to approve. I second. 2016. 03. 03. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Resolution 2016-03 passes. So, Paul, are you going to publish that we have these committees and put the applications out there? What, what's our next step? Yeah, so, um, thank you. We can get signatures on those, too, and that'll be great after we all leave. Um, so I put down here basically a, a draft of an application. And it's, yeah, I saw that. Um, you know, fill in the blank committee. Um, I I took off. You know, if it, if this is going to be a blanket one, uh, blanket one, the section that says this committee's primary responsibility is to blank because um, you know they're going to know that by what unless we do it committee by individual committee, we'd have to write that in there. Right. So that might be something we'd exclude. In fact, I've kind of drafted up a, another basically the same thing without that and have like printed applications that we could start even you know soliciting from tonight if we so chose or at least get get to you guys to to uh um so that th that i think we have and so is there thoughts on the application i guess Other i think it's fine i i mean I th yeah I it, was, it was fine simple um i know that there was a discussion at the last meeting about background checks I'm personally don't need those for well and it says we may choose to have a background check at the bottom so well that's um, that's on this kind of this ran to two pages that sa sample process is, is is yeah kind of like so you got an application and then at the bottom that wouldn't necessarily be on this the application well I I think it might not be a bad idea to to have those things on there so that the people that are applying know what to expect. Right. That, you know, I mean, because heaven I, forbid that somebody applies for this and then finds out that they have to have a background check and doesn't want to, you know, wants to withdraw their application. Right. That's, that's a fair point. Um, and then I think, though, if you do implement a background check, you just need to be universal about the way you implement. You, you need to just basically do it. We can't do it just for you, or yeah, just for me yeah. exactly. You can't look at me and say yeah, yeah, background. background. Yeah. Do, do you envision this being a, a committee by committee decision, or the board it could decide whether? Well, the board should decide if it needs to be a committee. If it's if it's part of one committee, that could be a board decision. If it's part of all committees, that would also be a board decision. But I think you're you're even better if you don't do that. Like, well, only for committees X, Y, and Z. I mean, there's a little 
fudge. I mean, I, I get it, and, and the, the point that we raised was the events the committee, events and, committee. And, and you know, which is the only one I can I can kind of see. I just I still don't really know that it's necessary. Yeah. I mean, unless we do a daycare event. And then just as the, um, I think some of the cause for the city to implement the background check. It wasn't necessarily about. Um, impacts to, to children or minors or it was also just um, looking at violent offenders frankly and that may if somebody has a violent history that may be a red flag that you don't want them on a committee where you have to so we have the authority to get things. them off of the committee as soon as they show you do absolutely so I, the majority vote you do yeah um, so but you wouldn't if, if you could avoid that and all, a simple background check avoided that, and you didn't have a confrontation that was either violent or threatening or whatever. Then that, you know, that that's where the city I think landed. It's like let's just let's just screen them in advance, and then we don't have to worry about as much that someone's gonna. I just don't. I, I don't. I. Yeah, it's 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 a tough thing for I, a committee. I, it's a tough thing. I I just don't. I mean for. The scope of things that we're doing, I just don't see it as being a valuable tool. Um, and I, like, like I don't want to discourage people from applying not. because it's so onerous. I know, like, to volunteer coach at the high school now is so onerous that yeah. it's ridiculous. I, I mean, if I didn't have a child there, I'd flat out refuse to do it. Yeah, it, and because it's way too onerous. And you know, they've got even. And I'm not even talking about background checks, but I this for a, a water quality. Subcommittee at no. Yeah, no, I hear that. I hear that absolutely. It, you you want participation. You don't want to discourage participation. I think a background check is just trying to discourage participation that you don't want. To help filter sure, that. Sure, but out. if I'm a violent offender and I'm looking for a committee to go and commit violent acts, it's not going to be a water quality committee. <laughs> One there's, hopes there's, not. There's, there's Particularly no Kent, I think. No background <laughs> check required. Us. to be a member of this board no yeah. or is there for to run for office but the right. that's the public process that exists in fact the the news guard just to get at that point they decided to run background checks when the city decided they're going to put you know potentially put background checks on committees well they ran background checks on all the board or on the council oh and now and then you know and they published that you know so being a public um public representative, public uh, official, you know, there is opportunity for that type of scrutiny through the election process. You have to you have to authorize a, a background check to be run on you though, right? I, I don't know what how that how that occurred. I don't know honestly I don't know the, the, in, the ins and outs it's of that. Late. But yeah. Let's move on. But they did do that. Okay. I I think that this application looks fine. I think that um, the stuff at the bottom, I don't see any reason why it can't remain on there. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be a good thing to leave on there. It wasn't my intention. Yeah, I think maybe the, the I'd get rid of sample thing. process, you know, yeah. possible Procedure, processes, procedure. possible procedures, possible um, uh, whatever, but get rid of the word sample. and. Then yeah, well, yeah, this publish it. A suggested process, yeah, and sure. it was really just for your yeah. your decision. I, I like the fact that you might want to keep it on the application so that the applicant knows yeah. what the process well, is. Yeah. I didn't even consider that, but that's I think that's a good idea. Very good. I think so. We've got. So, a, do you need a, a motion to publish these committees, publish this application, so that we can get? I think so. Let's Actually, get committees. I think that's a great. Okay, idea. I would like to make a motion to publish the committees that were just approved, and to publish this application. And and um, I would maybe even go so far to say as contact the media to let them know that that these have been established and and move on. Let's get some committees going. You're eliminating the word sample from yes. sample process. Yeah. Yeah. I. I'll leave that. Yes. Application. Whatever you decide there, I'm good with. I second the motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Thank you.
so one next step that you could do, I mean, you've, you've kind of already done this, but now that you've officially established the committee, it might be nice to appoint a member, which would be like potentially Kent to the, you're, you're, you've been pretty much pointed at being the one for the water quality, but since you have established it now, I think I, you should have. Oh, I thought we I already thought, did that a long time did. ago. It kind of hadn't established the committee though, officially okay. now. Now that you have, I think it makes sense just to do that, just for the record, I think it's simple, simple to do. Well, I would move that we, um, appoint uh, individual directors to each committee um, in the fact that we appoint myself to the Save Our Shoreline and Water uh, Monitoring Committee, um, that we appoint uh, David to the Events and Communication Committee, uh, that we appoint um, Tina to the Septic Inspection Committee, that we appoint uh, let's see, uh, Brian to the sewer committee, and that we appoint. Well, just hold that one because you haven't established that okay. one. That's kind of my point. Just to, yeah. Uh, of those committees, we have four appointments. And Bill gets all the rest of the committees. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passes. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we probably should do is each of us that have a committee um, think of a time. I think, Paul, we can get space at the, at the community college, a small room to meet, um, yeah. establish a time uh, in a, a, a regular monthly meeting. I think that that's the best kind of way forward, you know, so you have some consistency. And For the first meeting, for sure, and but at then least getting we can decide you if know, there's a better, a better meeting, meeting date yeah. or time or place. Yeah, but but then yeah, it's it's a lot of coordination, and the more we can streamline it and be consistent, it'll ease the availability for finding space. And you know, it might be such that it's a you know just an empty room up at the college too. It might not be the you know like a meeting room, but I think we can they can accommodate that pretty easily. But um, they have classes. Classes are getting busy there. Frankly, it's. it's Parking lots are starting to fill up. It's good news. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. A lot of activity at the community college. Okay. Well, I know that uh, I suppose I could uh, look this up easily enough, but I'll just ask if you know, um, do we have to, I know we have to establish a regular meeting date. At least the um, resolution implies that we do. Um, but I, mean, I would envision, you know, some people are going to be from out of town, some aren't. It won't always be convenient for them to come at the same time. We might at, at, at the end of our committee meeting at least um, ask folks what's the next best convenient time and kind of take a discuss it and establish a date that's convenient for everybody instead of having this right regular. Yeah, no, that's that's appropriate to do, absolutely. As long as we publish it, right? Yeah, well, you can announce it at your meeting because you've, you've advertised your meeting, you held your meeting, you announced the next meeting, and then you advertise it again until you're covered. Okay. Right. Um, the, uh, the one thing, you know, when I added the sample process, this was like the procedural stuff. Um, if you wanted to decide on that process, this point that was that's why I put it in there as a suggested like process like you know are you gonna how are you gonna decide who gets the appointment you know it says you have the options but do you know what you want to do I mean that's I guess it's I'm asking you, you let's just, see what kind of applicants we get and deal with it as well like so like you could decide on how to sort through those applicants after you receive them Is that okay we can do that sure I, you know, yeah, wait. Well, the, the only qualification is this, um, you know, the, some electors, some property owners, at large members, and a board member. That's all this says about qualifications. Well, in each, well, like my committee is just inside the district. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, people that are living, yeah, voting. Living voting. Vote helps. Voting helps. helps. And I would like them Breathing to be Breathing is good. Living voters, yeah. Living voters. Breathing. Yeah. People that can swim. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's uh, somebody I can drop down into a septic tank. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Slight. Mm -hmm. Very good. 
It's getting late. Yeah, I think we're good. Thank you. <laughs> I'm falling apart. New business. Quick announcement. We've got an internship that we're offering. Um, applications are through February 19th. It's a summer internship again. It's the same as we've done for about six, seven years now, more or less. Um, it's been advertised uh, widely through uh, Portland State and, and OSU and U of O and Oregon Coast Community College. And, Do we uh, have any applicants yet? We've had two. Oh, good. Which is, uh, last year, at this, I mean, we had like 29. Oh. So, um, oh. something on that order. Let's see, let's see, spread the word. Yeah, well, there was a ton of applicants. And, and other years, we've had 20. So, two is kind of small, but we're not... We have a little bit shorter window of an application period, um, and it's not over yet. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, people have things to do. Um, I'm sorry, just last week, so maybe. You know, if if it made sense that these two applicants weren't um, suitable, I, I think I would just extend it. And I may just make that decision, you know, based on the hiring, you know, capacity I have for the district. So, um, but that's the time frame I gave. It's kind of nice not to have 30. It took a long yeah. time to filter through 30 or 29 applications last year yeah. so we only need one so well yeah so um but yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's available um this new, other new business item is uh we we already have an appointment process for the budget committee and so we've had that and so you had uh, this advertised um close the application period i think february 3rd uh you received two applications you have two applicants. Uh, they were attached into the uh, staff report, their applications. Um, and So you need us to move to appoint the budget committee? If you so chose, yeah. Yes. That would, this would be the meeting to do that. Out. Okay. I make a motion to appoint the budget committee um, and the candidates seeking appointment. You, I can do that all in one fell sure. swoop, right? Uh, Mitchell Moore and Mark Christie. Second. Any other further discussion? All in favor of appointing Mitchell Moore and uh, Mark Christie to the Budget Committee, say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you guys for you are now being willing again. Budget committee. So those will be for uh, three-year terms again, so thank you for that. Very good. Thank you for volunteering is right. And the meeting is May 13th at 10 a.m. here in these chambers. And then we have price agreement uh -oh. um, proposal. Correct, yeah. Do you need a motion for that? Yeah, so uh, I might just introduce it, and then if you so desire to have a motion and accept it. Okay. <laughs> but um, I, can, I can do it really quickly. It's uh, <laughs> a proposal from By the Sea Gardens for... Um, uh, basically uh, to perform all labor necessary for review and comment on permit applications, documents, graphics, research, and presentations for DLWAD at a rate of $50 an hour. All phone calls, emails, documents, and mailings will be logged and submitted for such billing. So basically it's just um, a price agreement just allow, is just a, a firm bid that you can tap into. Um, now, if the district um, had something that they wanted to do, like say this, you know, removed fill per permit, which is kind of where this stems from, then I could look at this, look at your consulting um, allowance that may be under material and services currently, which you have delegated to me to, to use if need so, need be, and then, you know, spend 50, 100, 200, 400 dollars, some, w w whatever's within the budget item, right? right? So that would be kind of assumed um, because you've already delegated that responsibility to me. So this would be one of the tools that you could use that budget item for? Yeah, exactly. Perfect. I move that we accept this proposal by Bio Sea Gardens. I second the motion. Any further discussion? Um, all, all in favor of uh, accepting the price agreement by, uh, between the district and by the Sea Gardens signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah, and again, it doesn't obligate the district to actually right. spend any money. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, any other non-agenda items by the board? 
right? Not me. Thank you. I have one. Um, and last year I was involved in the evaluation process of Paul. And that <laughs> happened in June. And one of the comments was, we should have done this a lot earlier. And so I'd like to see us um, have an executive session to, we, we, here we've been as a, a, a newly formed board from July 1st, and we've been here eight months, and I'd like to have an, ex, uh, an executive session to evaluate what's taken place so far with the board and our lake manager um, sometime between now and our next meeting. How do I, how do I, that's Is that a special that's meeting and you move into executive session from a special meeting? Or can you have just an executive session? You can have just an executive session. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's my understanding. Brian, you're, you're nodding. I, I think. I, that's, I guess. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Yes, you can have just an executive session. You have to give notice of it. Right. Right the media. So I, I would like to move that we have that um, sometime the next between now and the next days meeting, or whatever. which is I think the uh, the tenth or the eleventh of March. Um, the tenth. Where we can do it an evaluation. And one of the comments in, by our insurer was that we need to come up with a better evaluation process of our lake manager and stuff too. I noticed that and so maybe this can move to toward doing that. I can meet on the third would be the first time I could meet before our next meeting. Or uh, possibly the 29th. Or the 29th. Was it the of our, something like the 10th or 11th? The, 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 the is our next, next board meeting. meeting is the 10th. So if we had it on Thursday the 3rd, would that kind uh, of work? I can't, I can't do it until March 9th. That would be the day before the <laughs> board meeting. Qualifies. <laughs> <There's> uh -huh. <laughs> in the weather. You're intent, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, could I, don't, I don't know about David, but we can assume he's probably fairly flexible. Phil, do you know your availability? Available. So should we go forward with the ninth and hope David can make it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. OK. We want to have that in the afternoon or the evening, or um, what's? How about you know six o'clock? Yeah. So the, that's a Wednesday, six o'clock, March sixth, and March ninth. Oh, ninth. March ninth. Sorry, a little upside down here. March ninth, <laughs> um, six p.m. Okay. at the Oregon Coast Community College, an executive session. So we've we've announced that now. So that so we're doing it at the community college. Does that work better? I mean, that's normal. Yeah, yeah that's, that's totally fine with me. Yeah, you only need a room big enough to hold yourself and the media, so we can get that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your consideration of scheduling that. Uh, you bet. Is there are there any other non-agenda items from the board? No. Uh, additional comments from our audience. We have Mark or Christy. Thank you, sir. Oh, thanks. So what I've handed here, most actually all of you um, have seen it's some email correspondence. Um, at the tail end, what I wanted to do, and I'm speaking um, as a board member for the Devil's Lake Neighborhood Association, is to, and I think you guys all know this by now, is we, we uh, love to be proactive. Um, and in the back section here, we had a storm event on December 8th. And uh, on the Devil's Lake, uh, the Navigator page, which is a, a uh, Facebook publication, and you can go to dlakeoregon.com <coughs> also, there's a posting of an article talking about storm conditions and 
uh, directly relating to, to uh, the uh, our uh, dredging application and having people be aware of keeping an eye on the shoreline and then also a uh, post about the uh, article in the news guard referencing the uh, um, sewer spill um, that happened also in conjunction with that storm and and so I uh, I actually read it in the newspaper in the news guard when it came out and I had sent an email to Paul and he responded very quickly and I appreciate that just asking him why I went to the website and I looked and I was looking for some, I went to water quality and I go where is the notification of this sewer spill event um, and so I shot him an email, um, I believe it was uh, on the 22nd of December, and he got back to me and forwarded me some correspondence from Lila Bradley, who I spoke to twice, and she appears to be a phenomenal gal, does a great job as the public works director. And what I had uh, asked her is, gosh, can you provide me some information um, on this storm event? And, and Paul had reached out to her already, which was great. Um, and in my correspondence here, I got back to her and I said, I was, this is me uh, speaking to, to Lila. I was glad to hear you reached out to, ball, to Paul. And he committed to being the point person in reporting out to our membership, DNLA, with any possible water quality events when they occur in the future. So, um, and I also, in a correspondence back from Paul, when I got the initial uh, information that he provided me from Lila, I said, gosh, I think it would be really important that any time there's a, a storm event that causes any sort of water quality in the, in the lake that you notify, you know, you put a posting on the website, you notify through your water quality or your um, listserv, and then also the neighborhood association would like to be informed so that we can pass that information along to our membership. Didn't get any response back at all. Um, I also looked again yesterday on the website, went to water quality, no posting of that storm of, I mean. From 2000 in the, but excuse of me, the, sorry. Of the, the water, uh, the sewage spill. So all I'm saying, and I know from talking to Lila that the city did a great job. They expended considerable resources to address it. So I'm very confident of that. but. Again, we're into being very proactive and letting people know when there is an event that affects the quality of the water so that they're at least aware of it. So that's, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. So you're looking for when events take place that they're posted on our website? Correct. In, the, in, in a timely manner so that you can notify? Yeah, and, and actually I, I would look, and I would be the point person for our neighborhood association. I'd like to get a you know, when, he, when Paul sends out an email saying, hey, there's notification of this water quality event specific to, because this is during the non-testing period, um, that we're copied on that information so that we can get that out promptly through our Navigator website and other means to inform membership of, of what's going on in the lake. It's all positive. It's all good stuff. But I really don't like reading about it in the paper when I'm thinking I should be able to go on our website or have, you know, that information provided me to me through the great communication tools that Paul's put together. So, anyway, that's my request. Is, is that easily possible, Paul? Well, I, you know, we talked about this, and I said yes, we could do that. So, you know, he's asking if we have something from 2015 December. I just make make a statement about that. We don't have anything from that event on there for a reason. It's well past, so just to make that comment. But um, what, what I told him is easy to do is to, and, and we do this uh, through our uh, Twitter and Facebook pages to, to get that out there. To make a, you know, I can do that remotely, you know, but to actually change the website, that is a much, you know, you have to be in the office here. The software doesn't allow me to do that directly. So uh, that, there's some limits to that. But beyond that, uh, I, like I said, I had agreed to forward on inf any information I had to him which I would do, which we haven't had anything since that event. So if it happens during a business week, it can be on the website. Much more, yeah. If it happens yeah, Friday night, 
Yeah, it's not I don't have a remote. Monday morning. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't have that capacity, right? Yeah, but so that's acceptable. Yeah, and and the the website isn't really a good tool for alerts, anyhow, because the websites are more static. Anyhow. No, but I can see. I mean, if we got it updated, great. And not to but to um, rely on it as a tool there. Um, people aren't going to a website. I think it's fine that I mean I think it's great. It's on Facebook and Twitter, but yeah. for I mean. I can name 10 people right now that live on the lake that aren't on Facebook or Twitter. Right. Yeah. That would probably go to the website. <laughs> right. So. It, but I guess the, the announcement part, and that's why that's a great tool, is because, you know, without a prompt, people don't go to the website. Well, yeah, except that rumors fly. I mean, yeah. just like the, the Horseshoe Bay incident this summer is a mm -hmm. great example of huge sewer spill in Horseshoe Bay. Somebody's septic is overflowing, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what? Right. And Misinformation. Yeah. And so if I can go to the website and say, okay, the Horseshoe Bay issue is, um, you know, dead algae. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and, you know, I called you, but some people aren't going to call you they're going to run with the septics are overflowing into horseshoe bay and i don't want that to happen yeah. but if there's sewer overflowing in the lake i want people to know that i mean not that they're most likely going in the lake when we have major storm events but yeah all right well apparently if you email mark you're going to get the word out right so yeah but there's a couple board members that don't go on to Facebook or Twitter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I Maybe not here. <laughs> oh, he would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All, right. All right. Are there any additional comments from the audience? Mitchell Moore? I hate to come back up on the same topic, but again, applaud the efforts of the uh, creation of the committees. Terrific. Um, but I was trying to listen real closely because I didn't have in front of me. I think at least one, the septic, and I'm not sure if others, all the membership was for electors. And in that particular case, I guess I'd request maybe a consideration of either splitting that between electors and property owners, or uh, that might be the best solution. But um, there's a, that eliminates probably a large number of the people who would own homes that have septics, especially on the east side of the lake, there's a little more prevalence of vacation homes over there. And they wouldn't be able to participate if they aren't registered to vote in Lincoln County. And there's a lot of them, trust me, I know. So maybe if we split that one, it's just a suggestion, then it opens up at least some opportunity for people. Because if you live out of town, own property here, and you aren't voting here, you can participate. So that's just a simple thought. And then Beyond that, um, once this gets all cleaned up and um, um, you know printed and since they're ready, um, if you were to forward that uh, the, these to me, um, Paul, I'd be happy to help assist in you know getting the word out um, to at least those that I have access to, and then if I suggest you send it to the rest of the neighborhood associations because they probably would be happy to help you with that as well. So. So it's just something to think about, but um, I, that, I think there's only one that's just electors. Which one was that? Is that right, I think it was just the septic. Oh. I was trying to listen. Yeah, to and yeah, I, I apologize for that. that. I um, I when I was thinking electors, I was thinking own oh, a home in the district, th right. but I right. realized. So that. you could either switch it to property owners or split the membership 50-50 between the two, and but at least, at least that would open it up to. People can it who are be? Out of town. Can we just say and or? Um, property owners and or electors in case it's somebody that's renting a property and they're elector I mean, you could or they own a property and they're not an elector yeah, that or if way. you did 50-50 in the account whatever you want to do but it's just what's the thought so. okay thanks I appreciate that because yeah I want to make sure that more people are involved instead of less right can we make those changes do you make it now if you wanted to yeah or later I say Let's and or I say it can Well, you then you really you still don't have a property owner requirement if you do that you, because you can name all electors. Mm -hmm. So that would be the decision. Do you want to require that you have a? Well, it said oh. property owner and or elector. Well, and or means you could have just just electors, or or just property owners, or but it was just but it would make it open to all. Could be either. Well, I, I think what the yeah, suggestion in, was is maybe a two and two. In, in the, well, but then or what if you have three property owners come forward and yeah, that's, I mean, that's, and that's it? 
you know, then you yeah. have to exclude one of them because it says They're I can only have two. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those are the, the restrictions that you're setting. So I think setting. you could say either property owners or electors. Well, I, I think that's what Tina is basically saying. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, I, I'd make a motion on that, the septic inspection that it says, and what's a better word, Brian, word. either or. And, and or is fine. I, I was looking at it from the other way, that, that you can still exclude property owners. But I think your intention is to get some property I want owners I want more people to be able to be on the committee. So I don't want to exclude anybody. So I want it to say property owners and or electors. So it works for me. Rent a property and are a voter, or you own a property and are not a voter, you can be on the committee. Okay. okay. Let's make those changes. Okay. Thanks, Mitch. I think that's. Make Tina make the motion. I did make the motion. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Passes. Okay, make those changes. Yeah. Are there any other um, comments? Additional comments from the audience? Oh. Additional comments from the board? Um, I just have a, a request. I'm sorry. Just because it, you know, it's almost 9 o'clock again. I was like, oh, this isn't going to be too bad of a meeting. But is there any way to, I, and we can keep doing it the way that I've done it the last two meetings, of the stuff that is, is not active on our agenda of not including it on the agenda? I know we've talked about this before. Yeah, and they're just there for information. So the updates are, you know, accepted or denied and you don't have to accept them. I mean, they're not they're not they're not really being uh, you're not spending much time on them. So I think that was the argument is like, well, if you have the argument for keeping an item on the agenda, whether or not there's an update or not, is that you want a, the continuity. So if there's no update, it doesn't take a millisecond to just continue on. So okay. the, the agenda may look long, but it doesn't have to be arduous, I guess. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's a really good checklist, you know, to just to know it's all there. So okay. And we're kind of not so I'll just keep making motions to skip it. <laughs> well, and, you know, <laughs> even moving through it, it didn't take any time to move through it. It looks like it could make take a lot of time, but it, it, okay. it doesn't. All right. You know, particularly that communications list is just... It just takes there. up a lot of space in the staff yeah. report, but it's not yeah. something. And the happens. links change, say, if it's the, the like, the spring uh, newsletter comes out, that link will change so it's, it's always available. Okay. It's just sharing. Really. All right. Sharing is caring. And, and again, the continuity, I think, is really fundamental so that it's okay. in the minutes and it's on an agenda item from whenever it starts to whenever it finishes. Okay. Great. That's all. Anything else? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for all for coming. Sorry it ran so late. Despite our best efforts. Yeah. Well, you've had $100,000. I know. So, <laughs> I wouldn't think that it was a 9 o'clock meeting too bad when you had that. No, I know.